The first half will be brought to you by the Savings and Loan Foundation. The third period by Marlboro and Alpine Cigarettes and Pal Razors. And the fourth period by the Ford Motor Company. It's a cold day in New York. A temperature of 20 degrees under fairly sunny skies. And there's a strong northwest wind at 25 to 30 miles per hour sweeping over the triple deck stands and swirling inside the stadium. But this is the game of the year in professional football, the game that fans across the nation have been waiting for, the game that has everything. And for the third time in three years, the Green Bay Packers have won their way into the title game by topping the Western Division of the National Football League. For the second straight year, they'll be meeting the New York Giants, the Eastern Division champs, and the Giants will be out to gain revenge for the 37-0 defeat hung on them at Green Bay City Stadium last year. They'll be out to stop the league domination by the Packers, and they'll be working at it in front of the home folks here at Yankee Stadium. Again, this game will match coaches who a few years ago were both assistants on the Giants staff under Jim Lee Howell. It was just a little more than four years ago that Vince Lombardi left his job as offensive coach for the Giants and took over as head coach and general manager of the Green Bay Packers after Green Bay had lost 10, won one, and tied one in the 1958 season. In 1959 in Bangor, Maine, the Giants and the Packers met in an exhibition game and the Giants won. Since that time, the Green Bay Packers have not lost a preseason game. The two teams also met during the regular 1959 season here in Yankee Stadium, and the Giants beat Green Bay 20-3. Since that time, the Packers have not lost a regular season game to an Eastern Division team, although the Philadelphia Eagles beat them in the championship game in 1960. So in the span of four short years, Vince Lombardi has taken the Green Bay Packers from the bottom of the league to the pinnacle of football success. But Ali Sherman, who took over the helm of the Giants after Jim Lee Howell retired, has known success, too. Twice he's led the New York Giants to the Eastern Division Championship, last year with a 10-3-1 record, this year with a 12-2 mark. And the only prize that has eluded Ali Sherman is the league championship. This is the prize his Eastern Division champions will be trying to win for him today. Over the years, these two teams have met 33 times. Green Bay has won 16 of those games, the Giants have won 15, and two have been tied. The Packers and the Giants have been matched for the championship on four occasions. The Packers have won three times, the Giants once. They met for the first time in a championship game back in 1938, and the Giants won 23-17 here in New York. The next year in Milwaukee, the Packers gained revenge as they shut out the Giants 27-0. In 1944, Green Bay beat New York for the championship 14-7 at the Polo Grounds. And last year, the Packers recorded that 37-0 shutout at City Stadium in Green Bay. Altogether, the Packers have played in six of these championship games, winning four of them. The Giants set a playoff game record every time they win their way into this battle because they have participated in 12 of these games already, this being their 13th, more than any other team in the National Football League. The Giants have won the championship three times in those 12 games. The last time they held the league title was in 1956 when they beat the Chicago Bears 47-7. We'll have the starting lineups for you in just a moment. Once again, the Savings and Loan Foundation brings you on behalf of your insured Savings and Loan Association the Game of Games, the professional football championship of the National Football League. We invite you to join the more than 30 million Americans who make insured Savings and Loan Associations their headquarters for thrift. Remember, where you save does make a difference. And this game is brought to you by Marlboro, the filtered cigarette with the unfiltered taste. You get a lot to like with the Marlboro, so settle back and listen to today's big game with the Marlboro Cigarettes. And today's NFL championship game is also being brought to you by Ford, makers of the new Super Torque Fords, middleweight Fairlanes, fun-filled Falcons, and classic Thunderbirds. The new Fords for 63, the most popular cars in Ford's history. Briefly now, these are the tentative starting lineups for today's game. On offense, the New York Giants will have Del Schaffner at left end. At left tackle, Roosevelt Brown. At left guard, Daryl Dent. At center, the veteran Ray Witeka. At right guard will be Jack Stroud. At right tackle, Greg Larson. At right end, Joe Walton. The quarterback will be Y.A. Tittle, who's had himself quite a year. At left halfback, we will have Phil King. And at right halfback, the flanker back, it will be Frank Gifford coming back after a year of retirement. And the fullback will be Alex Webster. On defense, the Green Bay Packers will line up with Willie Davis at left end. 
At left tackle will be Dave Hanner. At right tackle, Henry Jordan. And at right end, Bill Quinlan. The left linebacker will be Dan Curry. The middle linebacker, Ray Nitschke. And the right side linebacker will be Bill Forrester. At the left corner position, Herb Adderley. At left safety, Hank Greminger. At right safety, Willie Wood. And the right corner man will be Jess Whittington. On offense, the Packers will line up this way. At left end, Max McGee. At left tackle, Bob Skaronsky. At left guard, Fuzzy Thurston. At center, the veteran Jim Ringo. At right guard, Jerry Kramer. At right tackle, Forrest Gregg. And at the tight end, Ron Kramer. The quarterback will be Bart Starr. At left halfback, it will be either Paul Horning or Tom Moore. Coach Vince Lombardi has not committed himself as yet as to who will start in that position. The fullback will be the National Football League's leading ground gainer, Jimmy Taylor. And the flanker back will be Boyd Dollar. On defense, the New York Giants will have Jim Katkavage at left end. At left tackle will be Dick Modulewski. At right tackle, Rosie Greer. And at right end, Andy Robustelli. The left side linebacker will be the only rookie starting in today's championship game, Bill Winter. The middle linebacker will be Sam Huff. And the right side linebacker, Tom Scott. At the left corner position, Erich Barnes. At left safety, Alan Webb. At right safety, Jimmy Patton. And at the right corner position, Dick Lynch. Those are the tentative starting lineups for today's championship game. In this 1962 season, the defending champions, the Green Bay Packers, compiled a 13-1 record. Their only loss being to the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day by a score of 26-14. to Still, the Packers went right down to the final game before winning the championship as the Chicago Bears edged the Lions 3 to nothing, and the Packers put the icing on the cake by winning their final game against the Los Angeles Rams 20 to 17. Just the opposite of last season when they took the Eastern Division Championship on the last day of the regular season, the Giants found themselves in the same boat as the 1961 Packers when they clinched the division title in their 12th game this year. The Giants finished with nine straight wins and a 12 and 2 record. Their only losses of the season came on opening day against Cleveland by a 17-7 score and in their fifth game of the year when the Pittsburgh Steelers beat them 20-17. The difference in these two teams could narrow down to the difference between the two opposing quarterbacks, Bart Starr of the Packers and Y.A. Tittle of the Giants. During the season, there's been little to choose between them. Tittle is the more daring and probably the better long passer. Bart Starr is a fine short passer and probably the best signal caller in the league. They finished 1-2 in the final ratings with Starr edging Tittle as the league's top-rated quarterback, but old Yap threw 33 touchdown passes to set a league record. Tittle is the key to the Giants' success. He's 35 years old and is in his 15th season as a pro quarterback, 11 of them in the NFL, and this has been his best year. While he threw those 33 touchdowns, his gambles also put him near the top of the league in interceptions as he had 20 passes stolen. But Tittle has the flair to keep the Giants' offense perked up throughout the game. He uses the pass so effectively that the ground attack is only a menace, used to keep the other team honest from time to time. Starr is not as apt as Tittle to call a successfully unorthodox play, but this also means that he's not as likely to have a play backfire. With his conservative style, he's the perfect quarterback for Vince Lombardi's system, a football machine built on the theory that the team that makes the fewest errors will win. Starr appreciates very well his team's strong running, He'll smash away with the league's top ground gainer, Jimmy Taylor, or Tom Moore, or Paul Horning. When the defense pulls in to stop the running, he starts to throw. It's obvious then that the Packers and the Giants base their offenses on different philosophies. The Packers set up their ground attack to tighten the defense so they can pass, while the Giants establish their passing game to open up the defense for their running. In throwing those 33 touchdown passes, Y.A. Tittle fired 375 times, completing 200 of them for a passing percentage of 53.3%. As we said, he had 20 intercepted. Starr threw 285 passes, completing 178 of them, or 62.5%. He had 12 touchdown passes and only 9 intercepted. For receivers, Tittle has Dell Schopner, ranked ninth in the league, catching 53 passes for 1,133 yards and 12 touchdowns. Fullback Alex Webster caught 47 for 477 yards and four touchdowns. Flanker Frank Gifford gathered in 39 passes for 796 yards and seven touchdowns. While tight end Joe Walton caught 33, scoring nine touchdowns and totaling 406 yards. Bart Starr threw almost equally to end Max McGee and flanker Boyd Dollar. McGee caught 49 passes for 820 yards and three touchdowns, while Dollar took down 49 passes and scored two touchdowns. 
Tight end Ron Kramer, who was Star's target when the going got tough, caught 37 passes and scored 7 PDs. On the ground, the Packers have the edge. Jimmy Taylor led the league, amassing 1,474 yards in 272 attempts for almost 5.5 yards per try average. Alex Webster was the Giants' leading ground gainer with 743 yards in 207 attempts, averaging 3 and 6 tenths yards per carry. Taylor also led the league in scoring with 114 points as he set a new league record with 19 touchdowns, all of them running. However, New York's Don Chandler finished second in the scoring race as he totaled 104 points on 19 field goals and 48 extra points. Paul Horning, who set a record in last year's title game by scoring 19 points, was out with a bad knee for most of the season. However, he appeared in the Packers' final three games and is in good shape for today's battle. As late as yesterday, though, Coach Vince Lombardi declined to name Horning as his starting left halfback over Tom Moore. The rest of the Packers squad is in tip-top condition, with the exception of right guard Jerry Kramer, who will be playing today's game with a rib fracture. The Giants will probably not be able to use the services of halfback Paul Dudley, who has a bad knee. The Giants have a slight edge in both age and experience over the defending champions. The experience may be an advantage, the age probably isn't. When the 22 starters for each team are considered, the Giants average a year and a half older, 29 to 27 and a half. The experience edge for the Giants is more than a year apiece. Now this can be accounted for in two places. On their roster, the Giants have seven rookies, but only one is a starter. The Packers have five rookies, none of them are regular. The Giants have ten players with eight or more years experience. The Packers have only five, two of whom do not start. New York's veterans include defensive end, also assistant coach Andy Robustelli with 12 years playing time. Quarterback Y.A. Tittle with 11 years in the National Football League, 15 altogether in pro football. And Frank Gifford, Tom Scott, Dick Modzileski, Jack Stroud, and center Ray Wateka with 10 years experience. Rosie Brown has been with the Giants nine years and Jimmy Patton and Alex Webster for eight years. The Packers old-timers include Dave Hanner with 11 years service. Linebacker Bill Forrester and center Jim Ringo, 10-year veterans, and ends Lou Carpenter and Gary Knapple with nine years apiece. As we mentioned, the only rookie starter in today's game will be Bill Winter of Little St. Olaf College in Minnesota, who will go at left linebacker for the Giants. As this season started, the Packers were odds-on favorites to win the Western title. As stated so many years, as so many times this year by scouts of the other clubs, everybody knows what the Packers are going to do. But they do it so well you can't contain them. How can you stop with blocking and tackling? Execution is the key to the Packers' success. Coach Ali Sherman of the New York Giants lists five reasons why his Giants made it to the title game and rates them a better ball club than last year. First of all, Y.A. Tittle became thoroughly familiar with the Giants' system and their personnel. Secondly, Phil King established himself as a running threat from the left halfback position to diversify the Giant attack. Third, Alan Webb, an Arnold College graduate that the Giants picked up from the New England Sandlots last season, came through as a safety man to fill a weakness in the Giants' defense. Fourth, rookie Bill Winter did a fine job at left linebacker. And fifth, the offensive line has improved greatly over last year, especially in giving protection to Tittle. Even though the Packers are listed as favorites in this game, most everyone feels that Green Bay will not be able to repeat the 37-0 runaway of last year over the Giants. New York is hungry for revenge, and they're playing here at home at Yankee Stadium. Two big advantages. A comparison of the offense and defense of these two teams in 1962. The Packers led the league in scoring with 415 points. The Giants scored 398. on these two teams, but in championship games, you can throw the record book out because it's the upcoming 60 minutes of football that counts. And we'll be set for the kickoff in just a minute. John, hmm? you know, we've been looking at houses for a long time, and I think we should buy that ranch house we saw. It seems to have everything we want. I'm not so sure. 
Maybe we could do better by building our own home. Whether you buy or build your next home, you'll find the services of one man indispensable. He's a home loan specialist, and he's ready to serve you at any of America's insured savings and loan associations. He'll give you sound advice on financing your home, the down payment, the interest, the taxes, the monthly payments. And knowing what you can afford, he'll tailor a convenient home loan to meet your needs. Insured Savings and Loan Associations help over one million families a year buy or build their own homes. In fact, more home loans are made by Insured Savings and Loan Associations than by all other financial institutions combined. So when you find the home of your dreams, stop in at your nearby Insured Savings and Loan Association for a home loan personalized to your budget requirements, plus friendly, helpful service by home loan specialists. And now we pause 10 seconds for station identification. <laughs> Comes time right now to introduce the other half of this broadcast team and bring in the man who will be calling the first half of play-by-play -play for you. It's my pleasure to introduce... Ken Coleman, who does the Cleveland Browns games during the regular season. Ken? Thank you very much, Ted Moore, and good afternoon, everyone. We are waiting for the Packers and the Giants to come out of the dugouts now as 62,000-plus fans are on hand at Yankee Stadium. Repeating the weather situation, the temperature here is 20 degrees. There is a northwest wind about 25 to 30 miles an hour with occasional gusts. And down on the surface, it becomes a problem uh, because it does swirl around. The Green Bay Packers are now being... ...introduced individually as they take the field. Their offensive team going out there. Ray Wateka will be at center for Green Bay. Daryl Deffs and Greg Larson at the guards. Rosie Brown and Jack Stroud. Uh, pardon me, I'm giving you the Giants. Uh, switching over to Green Bay. Jim Ringo is at center. Fred Thurston and Jerry Kramer at the guards. Bob Skaronsky and Forrest Gregg at the tackles with Max McGee and Ron Kramer at the ends. Bart Starr is the quarterback. Paul Horning and Boyd Dollar will work at the halfback positions. Dollar, of course, is the flanker. And the great Jim Taylor will be at fullback. And Ted has already given you the Giants offensive team. The referee today is Emil Heinz of Pennsylvania. The umpire is Joseph Connell of Pittsburgh. The linesman is George Murphy of Southern California. The back judge will be Thomas Kelleher of Holy Cross. The field judge is Fred Swearingen of Ohio University. There are also three alternates with the officials today. Norman Schachter of Alfred, Louis Palazzi of Penn State, and Bruce Alford of Texas Christian. This is a late-arriving crowd, and the uh, game scheduled to start a few moments ago will probably be slightly delayed in the start as the Packers continue to come onto the field uh, being introduced to the crowd here at Yankee Stadium. The starting offensive lineup has been introduced, and now the rest of the squad comes out to join them. And uh, we should note that Paul Horning was introduced. Now, the Packers' backs and ends are wearing flat coaches' shoes, these are hard-top, ripple-soled shoes, and the Packer linemen are wearing cleats. When the Giants came out for their pregame warm-up, New York was wearing uh, sneakers and also these ripple-soled shoes, which we mentioned. They are not wearing cleats at all. Now the Giants are going to be introduced to the crowd here at Yankee Stadium. And uh, coming on first... Ray Woodpecker of Northwestern. Daryl Des and Greg Larson will be at the guards. Dell Schaffner and Joe Walton working outside of Brown and Stroud to tackle. Schaffner will be the split end. Walton will be in the tight spot. The veteran Y.A. Tittle at quarterback with King and Webster at the running back positions and Gifford as the flanking back. And it is interesting to note that to the crowd here, the Giants' defensive team is being introduced. And it will be up to the defensive team of New York today under Coach Allie Sherman to stop this great Green Bay attack. The Giants, over the years, have turned out some uh, really great defensive ball clubs. And they're getting a tremendous hand as they come out onto the field now.
the Giants, in spite of the fact that their defense was introduced, will be receiving the kickoff, and they will defend the north goal. The Packers will be kicking off from the south end of Yankee Stadium. The sun keeps peeking in and out behind uh, the clouds from the east end of this great stadium in New York. Right now, the referee, Emil Heinz, is out there at the center of the field. The Giants are just below us. Loosening up along the sidelines, Y.A. Tittle throwing the ball to uh, Del Schaffner. Ralph Guglielmi is also out there throwing. There was some question whether or not uh, Guglielmi would be ready to play if needed, but they expected he would be all right. Frank Gifford this week did work as a T quarterback. Now the captains are at the center of the field, Robustelli and Wateka representing the New York Giants. And uh, Jim Ringo is out there for Green Bay along with Bill Forrester. The indication that the Giants have won the toss and will be receiving. And the two teams go back for the final huddle now on either side of the field. And in a moment, they will be breaking onto the field, and this National Football League Championship game will be underway. There go the Giants. And uh, Willie Wood is getting ready to do the kicking off for the Green Bay Packers, setting the ball up on the 40-yard line. Corner and count are going back into the deep spots for New York. At the moment, they are huddling in the vicinity of the 25-yard line, and now we see Counts and Horner going back toward the goalposts, and Joe Morrison is right up ahead of them at about the uh, 15-yard line. Wood setting the ball up on the 40. Some of the Giants out there are wearing gloves, we notice. Darrell Dess, who is up front, has them on. And some of the Packers are also wearing gloves as the temperature is 20 degrees at Yankee Stadium. And now, Willie Wood is ready. And the ball, with all of the tension that uh, is present at Yankee Stadium, blows off the tee. So Willie has to go up and set it up once again. Now he is stepping back to about the 35, and again it goes off the tee. And uh, Earl Groh goes over to set it up for him, and now he's standing alongside and apparently is going to hold the ball for Wood as he prepares to kick off. Earl Groh is holding it there at the 40-yard line. And again, Emil Heinz comes to the sideline. There is a further delay now, and Forrest Gregg goes over to uh, grow and now Willie Wood again gives the signal and uh, finally we are underway at Yankee Stadium a low line drive sort of kick that goes to Joe Morrison at the 15 up the middle of the 20 cutting outside of the 25 and dumped as he gets over the 30 yard line Joe Morrison taking the kick off at the 15 yard line and running it out above the 30 and uh, making the tackle on the play was Elijah Pitts and he got some help from Ron Kostelnik the ball is spotted down at the 32 for New York, and it is first down, 10 yards to go for the Giants as Ray Wateka leads them out. Webster and King are set in behind Y.A. Tittle. Schaffner comes out wide on the left side. Tittle takes, and he gives it to Alex Webster, driving straight on and digging out a couple of yards. Ray Nitschke, the middle linebacker, and Dave Hanner, the defensive left tackle of the Packers, are in there to make the tackle on the play as Alex Webster... Burrowed in there to the 34-yard line for a gain of two to make it second down and eight yards to go. Again, Schaffner coming out wide on the left side, and Frank Gifford is going out to the right. Webster and King are set in behind Tittle, who makes his call, takes, gives it to King coming over the left side, coming across the 35, fights onto the 37-yard line, and is taken down there as Jesse Whittington, the defensive halfback, is in there to uh, make the tackle on the play. The ball is being spotted up there at the 38-yard line, so it's going to be third down, four yards to go for New York. Defensively, for Green Bay, Quinlan and Davis at the ends with Jordan and Hanner the tackles. 
Nitschke is the middle guard. Forrester and Curry, the backers. Wittens and Wood, Reminger and Adderley are the deep backs. Third down four at the 38. Tittle, draw play, giving to King. He's coming out to the 45, quite down to the 46-yard line. And again, it is the middle guard, Ray Nitschke, who is there to make the tackle along with Willie Wood. But it was Phil King that time, uh, finding a big opening and digging in over the left side of his line and back of Desk and Brown and fighting out to the 46-yard line. First down for the New York Giants. In the opening minutes of the opening period at Yankee Stadium in New York, the Giants have it, first and ten. Again, the veteran, versatile Frank Gifford going out wide to the right and Schaffner split left about eight yards off Brown as Tittle takes... Fakes and throws up the left side to Schaffner and a down and out. And there's a flag down on the play. It was incomplete at the 42-yard line of the Packers. A down and out pattern to Dell Schaffner. And Whittington was out there covering on him. And the penalty is against New York. The penalty will be against the Giants now. And back at the original line of scrimmage, the 46-yard line, the referee is going to uh, mark it off, and it will be on Schaffner. 15 yards, and it's offensive interference called against the Giants. Schaffner on Whittenden. The ball is back on the 29-yard line. Check it, just over the 30 on the 31, where it is first and 25 to go. Y.A. Tittle Sing, brings his club out. Now he's ready. He gave it to Webster, finding a hole and driving straight on, churning up the middle and getting out across the 40 and onto the 42-yard line. Hank Treminger, the left safety man, and Jesse Whittens in the right halfback making the tackle on the play as he took it 11 yards to the 42-yard line. And it will be second down for... The New York Giants says big Alex Webster found the opening right up the middle. Second down, 14 yards to go. Big Ray Wateka, 230-pound, 10-year veteran, comes out over the ball at center. Frank Gifford going out wide to the right. Schaffner again on the left side. Tittle back to throw. Looking, being rushed, and firing incomplete. He was trying to hit the tight end, Joe Walton, up around midfield as Walton was crossing from the right to the left side. And he threw it out of bounds, so it's going to be third down, 14 yards to go for New York at their own 42-yard line with 12 minutes, 36 seconds left to play in the first quarter scoreless game at Yankee Stadium. The Giants back in the huddle. Green Bay setting up defensively. Again, Gifford to the right. This time, Walton comes out wide. And Schaffner is inside him on the left side. Tittle to throw. Find the long pass for Schaffner. Overthrows him at the 20-yard line. Overthrow him by about five yards, and the ball is incomplete as Bill Quinlan got a good rush that time on Y.A. Tittle. So the Giants, with fourth down and 14 at their own 42-yard line, are going to have to kick the ball. And Elijah Pitts is going back deep with Willie Wood for Green Bay. They're standing back at about the 15-yard line. And Don Babe Chandler is in there to do the kicking. Chandler has averaged almost 45 yards for every punt he's made in the last six years in the National Football League. One of the game's great punters. And he boots it high and far. Going downfield, and it is bouncing on the 14-yard line. And it is fallen on by a giant, but rolls on into the end zone as the giant player did not get enough to... Uh, constitute possession of the football. Mickey Walker had his hands on it at the two, but it will come out to the 20-yard line, and Green Bay will go to the offense first down and 10 at their own 20. A 58-yard kick going into the end zone, and for the first time this afternoon, the Green Bay Packers go to the offense. Jim Ringo at center. Thurston, Kramer the guard, Skaronsky and Greg the tackles, Kramer and McGee the ends. Bart Starr at quarterback, and Jim Taylor. In behind him. It is a draw play to Paul Horning. And he drives to the 24-yard line. And up there to make the tackle was Bill Winter, the left linebacker. So Horning is in there in that starting lineup. Winter making the tackle as he came out to the 24. It'll be second down and six yards to go for Green Bay. Boyd Dollar is the flanking back. Taylor and Horning set in behind Bart Starr. 
whose average this year was about 62% throwing. Dollar coming out wide on the right side. McGee is split on the left about seven yards off Skoronsky. This is Jim Taylor driving out to the 25, over the 30 for the first time, fighting to the 33-yard line, and Dick Lynch, the right half back of the Giants, made the tackle on the play as he fought 10 yards to the 34, and it is first and 10 for Green Bay. They're noted as a ball control team, and they're trying to grind it out on the ground in the early stages. For the Giants defensively, Robustelli and Cat Cabbage, the ends, Greer and Mojalewski are the tackles, Huff is the middle guard, Scott and Winter are the backers, Lynch, Patton, Webb, and Barnes are the deep men. Again, it's McGee, wide to the left, and Dollar swings out on the right side. Bart Starr looks over the Giants defensive team, takes and throws up the middle and hits. It is a completed pass, and it was grabbed by Ron Kramer, the tight end coming from the left side over the middle and getting out to the 44-yard line where Jim Patton was there to make the tackle on the play. And it is enough for the first down up at the 44-yard line. First and 10 for the Packers. Again, McGee going out wide on the left, and Dollar comes out to the right. Kramer is set up on the left side this time. Jimmy Taylor coming around the right end and fighting across the 45, bouncing off a tackle at a midfield over to the giant 45. And out of bounds as he gets inside the 45-yard line, and it was the middle guard, Sam Huff, who took him down. As they bring the ball in, they set it at the 42. So it's first and 10 at the New York 42-yard line. A 14-yard pickup for Jim Taylor, who last year in the championship game played with an injured back. He led the National Football League in rushing this year. Again, Dollar out on the right side, and McGee out to the left as a star sets up the throw and fires down the left side for Horning. It is incomplete down around the 30-yard line. Horning going down toward the sideline on the left side. Jim Patton was out there covering him on the play, and it goes incomplete. And so at the 42-yard line of the Giants, it is second down and 10 yards to go for the Green Bay Packers with 10 minutes, 19 seconds left to play in the first quarter of the game and no score. Sam Huff calling the defensive signals for New York as the Packers go back into their huddle. Here they come up to the line of scrimmage. Same formation with McGee going out a little wider this time on the left side and Dollar to the right. Draw play Taylor driving over the left tackle position, fighting on, and Sam Huff is there to make the tackle on the play. The middle guard, Sam Huff of the New York Giants, King on the draw play. And along with Jim Cat Cabbage, he took him down at the 42-yard line, the line of scrimmage, and it is third and ten for the Green Bay Packers. 20 degrees in Yankee Stadium and a capacity crowd watching this National Football League championship game. Third down and ten now for Green Bay, and it's McGee going out to the left again and Dollar swinging out on the right side. Star is going back to throw. Way back, but it's a screen to Taylor. Takes it at midfield into the 45, onto the 40, into the 35, and out of bounds as Erich Barnes and Jim Patton manage to get to him. We'll see where they spot the ball when they bring it in. It is being spotted at the 29-yard line, and it is a first down. Jerry Kramer has been replaced by Ed Blaine for the Packers. The ball is in at the 29-yard line, and that was a big play with third and 10 at the 42-yard line of the Giants on the screen. Taylor took it to the 29 for the first down, and they keep the football. Bart Starr behind Jim Ringo gives to Taylor, and he's slashing again, churning into the line for short yardage as he uh, managed to get through pretty close to the 26-yard line. Roosevelt Greer is in there on the tackle. The big 290-pounder. The ball is spotted. In at the 26. The gain is three. It'll be second down and seven to go. The Giants break out of their defensive huddle as the Packers come up to the line of scrimmage. 
Boning and Taylor setting in behind. And here's Starr fading back to throw the ball. He sends it out on a screen to the left side to Taylor. He's breaking inside the 20-yard line, and Jim Patton gets him and sends him out of bounds at the 19. So once again, they give it to Jim Taylor, who is unbridled fury out here this afternoon. Fred Thurston threw a big block in front of him, and he took it in to the 19-yard line. Jerry Kramer was playing with a rib fracture, and uh, Ed Blaine has replaced him. Now, let's see. I think they are going to measure. They may uh, not have to measure. It looks like he did not quite make the first down. It is second down and about a yard to go. Or third down and about one. And now the officials are calling timeout for just a moment. And they are informing them that it is third down defensively. Now Kramer appears to be okay, and he has gone back in, and Blaine comes out of there for Green Bay. They started this drive back on their own 20-yard line. And in 10 plays, they have taken it to the 19-yard line of the New York Giants, where it is third and one with 8 minutes, 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter. No score. Boyd Dollar coming out wide to the right. This time McGee and Kramer stay in tight. Third and one. It is Taylor, and they stack him. They may have to measure to see whether he made it or not as Mojalewski, Greer, and Huff, the internal powerhouses of that uh, giant line, were closing the gap that time. Taylor trying to slash right up the middle with the football. Now they unpeel the pack. And it is fourth down. So we come to one of the early clutch situations, and the Packers apparently are going for the three. They're sending in their field goal unit with the ball just about on the 19-yard line. Jerry Kramer, with Bart Starr holding, will be trying from the 26. Ringo over the ball. It's back. It's down. The kick is in the air. And it is good. The score, the Green Bay Packers, three, and the New York Giants, nothing. There's time there is no getting away from the fact that a college education is an expensive investment. Yet more and more young people are entering colleges each year. Will your children be among the fortunate ones? When they are ready for college, will you be ready with the funds? All over the country, insured savings and loan associations are helping parents save to meet the cost of college education. The earlier you start, the less you will have to put aside each month. And remember, at an insured savings and loan association, excellent earnings help your savings grow fast with safety. So start now. Open a savings account at your nearby insured savings and loan association and add to it regularly. You can open an account in the name of each of your children. Each account insured up to $10,000 by the Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation a United States government agency. This is Ken Coleman with Ted Moore at Yankee Stadium in New York with seven minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The Green Bay Packers lead the New York Giants by a score of three to nothing on a 26-yard field goal by Jerry Kramer. And now Willie Wood is kicking off for Green Bay. Again, the ball coming down to about the 14-yard line where it is grabbed down there by Counts. And he's coming up the left side around a horner, and he gets it out pretty close to the 40-yard line as he came zigzagging up the left side of the field, and Ed Blaine was there to make the tackle on the play for the Packers. The ball is spotted at the 38-yard line, and it is first and 10 there for New York. When Jerry Kramer kicked the field goal, he apparently suffered a pinched nerve in his right shoulder, which has bothered him uh, periodically over the year. First and 10 at the 38. Phil King coming around the left end, gets over the 40 and fights on to about the 42-yard line. And there he is taken down 
Making the tackle was Jesse Whittington of the Packers on the play. He got some help from uh, Willie Wood. The ball spotted on the 43-yard line. The gain is five. It'll be second down, five yards to go for the New York Giants, who trail three to nothing. Now Frank Gifford going out wide to the right. Webster and King set in behind Tittle. The ends are tight. It is Webster driving on the left side and burrowing in there, getting across the 45-yard line. Big Dave Hanner, 260-pound, 11-year veteran, along with the left end, Willie Davis, there to make the stop on the play. He took it three yards to the 46-yard line, and it'll be third down and two yards to go for New York. The Giants had the ball for eight plays earlier. Then Green Bay took it from their 20 down to where they could kick a field goal. And the wind is blowing in gusts down there on the field now. The Giants wearing the sneakers and the uh, ripple-soled coaches' shoes. Third and two. Tittle faking twice and firing a pass for Schaffner. Hits him at the 42 of the Packers inside the 35. And taken down at about the 33-yard line. And up here to make the tackle on the play was Willie Wood. Big play by Y.A. Tittle as he hit from his own 46 to the 33 yard of Green Bay, hitting Del Schaffner coming from the left across to the right. First and 10 at the Green Bay 33. Tittle is back to throw for Schaffner, and he makes the catch and is taken down by Jesse Whittington as he gets into the 25 yard line. There's a gain of eight on it, and it'll be second down and two to go. So Y.A. is starting to wind up and throw that ball. Two out of four for Tittle. As the old pro goes to work and tries to move his ball club, they're trailing by a score of three to nothing. Five minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the first quarter of this game. Again, Schaffner coming out on the left, and there is Gifford out wide to the right. Second and two. Tittle back to throw. He hits King on the 30 on a screen, and he dives inside the 20-yard line and fights out of the 16. Jesse Whittington making the tackle on the play as he went to the 16-yard line. And the Giants are moving. They started on their own 38 after Horner's kickoff return, and they have it into the 16-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. First and 10 for New York. Ray Wateka leads them out. Gifford going out to the right. Schaffner digs out on the left side. Tittle. Draw play. And he gave it away that time to his running back. It's uh, King carrying and uh, getting into about the line of scrimmage. And there he's taken down by Ray Nitschke. Let's give him a yard, make it the 15, and it's second down and nine yards to go. Second and nine at the 15-yard line of the Green Bay Packers as the Giants come up to the line of scrimmage. Y.A. Tittle in the crouch looking, fading back to throw, firing, and the ball pops out of his hands. It's intercepted by Curry at the 10, back to the 15, over the 20, the 30, under the 35, and falling forward to the 39-yard line. As Tittle was trying to throw the football, somebody deflected it, and it went wobbly to the 10-yard line with a left linebacker. Dan Curry was there to make the grab, and he took it from the 10-yard line up close to the 40, and the Packers worked their way out of an early jam. There is timeout on the field with a score, Green Bay 3 and New York nothing. In a few days, the nation's insured savings and loan associations will say Happy New Year to their savers with a dividend to 32 million people. If you aren't sharing in these generous earnings, why don't you start the new year right by opening a savings account at one of the conveniently located insured savings and loan associations. All you do is go in, give your name, address, and signature, and the amount you want to start your account with. It's that simple. And what other New Year's resolution can you make that's so important to your future? You'll get a passbook that will make better reading each year as your savings grow. Helped by excellent earnings. So how about it? Remember, you have to plan ahead to get ahead. 
Stop in at your nearby Insured Savings and Loan Association and get the new year off to a profitable start by opening that savings account. Savings are insured by a United States government agency. We pause now 10 seconds for station identification. Packers ball on their 39-yard line, first and 10. Bart Starr is back to throw. He sends it out incomplete on the 43-yard line. He was trying to hit Max McGee, who had been at a tight right-hand position and just peeled off to the sideline. But it was a little in back of Max, and it goes incomplete. So it'll be second and 10 for Green Bay at their own 39-yard line. Starr has three out of five in the throwing department. The Packers worked their way out of a jam when Dan Curry made the interception, and it was Willie Davis who deflected the ball as Tittle was trying to throw. Now Boyd Dollar coming out wide to the right again. McGee to the left. Star is going back to throw, standing back in the pocket and firing up the right side. It is incomplete. He was trying to hit Boyd Dollar, and Erich Barnes was out there on the coverage on the play for the New York Giants. Barnes, uh, formerly with the Chicago Bears, big, fast, rugged, and a vicious tackler was out there on the coverage, so it'll be third down and ten. Green Bay on their own 39, four minutes to play in the first quarter, and the Packers lead in this game by a score of three to nothing. Here they come again, Boyd Dollar again to the right. Star gives it to Horning, who may throw, he's behind the line, he's running, he's up to the 45. And fighting his way close to midfield as Fred Thurston threw a key block out in front of him. And Sam Huff was out there with Jim Patton on the tackle. Let's see if he was uh, close enough. They may have to measure here. And that is what they're going to do. The officials are bringing in the chains as Horning that time took the ball from Bart Starr, started running to his right, looked like he might be going to throw it, and then changed his mind and ran. And they're measuring to see whether or not he was able to make the first down. Norm Masters is now in there playing at offensive left tackle for Green Bay, replacing Bob Skaronsky. Now the Benjamin, Jim Ringo, watching it very closely for Green Bay. And he made the first down. So the Packers come up with a big one, first and ten, after a third and ten situation on their 39. Paul Horning getting the first down for them. Green Bay leading by a score of three to nothing. The swirling winds, about 25, 30 miles an hour down there on the turf. Jim Taylor trying to run the left side, and Andy Robustelli, the uh, great veteran defensive end of the New York Giants. He's there to stack him up, and Jim Patton comes to Long to help him out on the play. Right at the line of scrimmage, as Taylor was trying to go over his own left side. Taylor, so far, has gained 38 yards in seven carries, according to our unofficial figures. So it's going to be second down, 10 yards to go now for Green Bay at their own 49. Again, it's big boy Dollar off wide to the right. Six foot, five inches tall. Star back to pass. He's throwing downfield for Kramer. A beautiful catch by Ron. And he's into about the 34-yard line. He had Dollar going deep and over the middle. And Kramer came across and cut to the outside and made a beautiful leaping catch of the ball. Alan Webb making the tackle on the play for New York. And the ball is into the 34-yard line of the Giants. And it is first and ten for the Packers. Six first downs now for Green Bay. Jim Taylor takes it from Bart Starr, driving into the line. It looks like a loose ball, but the whistle may have blown. A scramble for the ball as Taylor went cracking in for short yardage. Roosevelt Greer was there to uh, stack him up on the play. No fumble, as the whistle had blown when the ball came out of the pack. The ball is into the 31-yard line, so it's second down and seven to go. 
Second down and seven for Green Bay with a minute 49 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And the Packers leading by a score of three to nothing on Jerry Kramer's 26-yard field goal. Second and seven at the Giant 31. Taylor trying to sweep on the left side. And they're out there looking for him. And Cat Cabbage is able to make the tackle on the play. He came across with Mojolewski. And Jim Patton closed it up, too, in there to make the stop. And there is a loss on the play. Just a slight one, though, so it's still a third down and seven to go. Still seven with third down coming up. Now the Packers back in the huddle. Coming out of it slowly and up to the line of scrimmage. Dollar again wide to the right. McGee goes out on the left side. And it is Taylor running. And he's being spilled at about the 30-yard line. Jim Taylor started up the middle, tried to cut to the left side when he couldn't find the opening. And Sam Huff was there to meet him on the play. They took him down at the 30. And Taylor appears to be shaken up as he uh, is going out of there. And the field goal unit is coming on again. The ball at the 30-yard line, so it is fourth down and six yards to go. And Jerry Kramer, who has put the Packers in a lead already, will be trying a field goal from 37 yards away. March start a hold for him. The ball is put down and kicked in the air. It is coming up short. And uh, no good. So the Giants will take over. New York will take over, and we have reached the end of the first 15 minutes of play. That's the end of the first quarter with a score, Green Bay 3 and New York nothing. What does a man want most in his life? A safe and happy home for his children and his wife. He wants a piece of land he can call his own. A tiny patch of earth where his future may be grown. Be it 50 by 100 or acres by the score, his own piece of land is what a man is working for. When a man wants the money for that home of his own, he goes to see his friends at his savings and loan. Then things begin to hum on that tiny piece of land as all the builders' men start working hand in hand. The walls begin to rise, soon the roof trees overhead, and before you can believe it, all the kids are tucked in bed. Now a man and his family have a home of their own, thanks to their friends at the savings and loan. Thanks to their friends at the savings and loan. This is Ken Coleman with Ted Moore at Yankee Stadium in New York, and we're opening the second quarter of play with the Green Bay Packers leading the New York Giants by a score of three to nothing. The Giants have the ball on their own 20-yard line, first down and ten, after Jerry Kramer's 37-yard field goal try was short. Earlier, he had kicked one from 26 yards to put the Packers ahead by that score of three to nothing. First and ten, New York on their 20. Why a tittle, giving it to Phil King, driving over the left side and getting out to about the 25-yard line. And up there to make the tackle on the play was Jesse Whittington with help from the right linebacker, Bill Forrester. Whittington playing at the cornerback on the right side. The gain is five to the 25-yard line. It is second and five for New York. Y. H. Hiddle with Webster and King behind him. Gifford is off wide to the right. Schaffner is split out on the left side. Tittle gives his call. Webster has it driving and slicing back over the middle and getting up to about the 29. Pretty close to first down. And Ray Nitschke, the 235-pound middle guard, along with the right tackle, Henry Jordan, are in there to make the tackle for the Green Bay Packers. It is just shy of the first down, so it'll be third down, about a half yard to go for New York. Webster almost lost the ball that time on the exchange from Tittle, but then he took it and sliced back over the middle. Third down, a matter of inches to go. Wateka leading them out. Packers close it in. And the give is to King, sweeping on the right end. He's over the 30-yard line and gets the first down as Willie Davis makes the tackle 
helped out by the left linebacker Dan Curry. Davis and Curry, working on that left side, really complement each other for Green Bay. Davis, a charging type, and Curry, a very heady player. The advance is to the 32. The gain is three. It is first and ten for New York as the Giants, trailing three to nothing, are trying to get on the board. Schaffner again going to the left and Gifford coming out to the right. Tittle faking twice is back to throw. Sends it up for his halfback king and it is incomplete. Trying to hit him with a short one up over the middle. And it's going to be second down and ten to go at the 32-yard line for New York in their own territory. Ray Wittecker at center with Darrell Dess and Greg Larson at the guards. Rosie Brown and Jack Stroud the tackle. Schaffner and Walton the ends. Tittle the quarterback. The running backs are King and Webster. The flanking back is Frank Gifford. Tittle has three out of seven. Has had one interception against him. That by Dan Curry in the first quarter. Now it is second down and ten for the Giants on their own 32. Y.A. Tittle back to throw. Firing up the right side. Gifford can't hold on at the 48. It was a little high. He was open for just a moment. And then Hank Kreminger was uh, back there with him, but he couldn't hang on to the pass. So it's going to be third and ten. Henry Jordan is going to be leaving uh, the lineup, apparently with a leg injury, and Ron Kostelnik, 260-pound second-year man, goes in to replace Jordan. He'll be working at defensive right tackle. It is third and ten for New York at their 32, and the key possession play is coming up. Tittle is back to throw. In the pocket, firing and incomplete at the 43-yard line. He was trying to hit the tight end, Joe Walton, who was peeling back, and Hank Greminger was out there on the coverage. So the Giants have fourth down and ten at their 32-yard line. Elijah Pitts and Willie Wood are going back into the deep spots as Babe Chandler goes back to do the kicking. He's punted once, 58 yards. Booting from about his 20, and the kick going upfield, bouncing at the 39, and Pitts gets it, and he is hit hard. A tremendous tackle on the play that time, and uh, making it was Jim Collier, the rookie from Arkansas. We'll see where they spot the ball. It appears to be at about the 32-yard line. So it's Green Bay's football on their own 32. It is first and 10 on a 50-yard punt by Don Chandler and great coverage by his teammates. Here come the Packers out of the huddle, first and 10 at their 32. Bart Starr, quarterback. He gives the Horning after a fake to Taylor. He's running around the right end. Horning uh, picking up yardage to the 40 and uh, being sent out of bounds on the far side of the field by Tom Scott. The right linebacker of the Giants as he got over the 40-yard line and fought on to about the 43. It appears to be enough for the first down, and it is. The gain is 11. First and 10 for Green Bay on their own 43-yard line. The Packers have Jim Ringo at center. Fred Thurston is in there at left guard. Jerry Kramer working at right guard with Masters and Greg the tackles. McGee and Ron Kramer the end. Start quarterback. Corning and Taylor in behind him. And Dollar is the flanking back, and he's wide to the left. Draw play to Horning, coming up the middle, looking for room and fighting his way on to the 49-yard line on the play. Making the tackle was the left safety man, Alan Webb. He got some help from Bill Winter as he took it to the 49 for a gain of six, and it'll be second down and four yards to go for Green Bay. Defensively for New York, Robustelli and Cat Cabbage at the ends with Greer and Mojalewski to tackles, Huff the middle guard, Scott and Winter the backers, Barnes, Webb, Patton, and Lynch are the deep men. The temperature 20 degrees at Yankee Stadium, the wind swirling on the surface. Second and four on the 49. This is Taylor coming over the right side of the line and cutting back, looking for room, and going over into giant territory to about their 48-yard line, and E. Rich Barnes and Sam Hoff ride him back, and we'll see where they put the forward progress on the play. It's a hard, bruising battle. He took it to the 47-yard line. And that's another first down for the Green Bay Packers. First and ten. Green Bay in front of this in this game by a score of three to nothing with ten minutes and fifty seconds to play in the first half. Again, it's Boyd Dollar going out wide to the right, and Max McGee coming out on the left side. 
Bart Starr faking and fading the pass, throwing up the middle incomplete for Max McGee down around the 30-yard line. Heading up over the middle and a good rush that time. Made uh, Starr throw the ball in a hurry and it will be second and ten on the 47-yard line of the Giants. Bob Skoronsky is back in there at left tackle for Green Bay. Masters had spelled in for a while. The Packers coming out of the huddle, second and ten at the 47 of New York. Bart Starr fading back to throw, sending it out to Taylor. He's got it behind the line of scrimmage on the flare, and he is going to be dumped at about that line of scrimmage as Sam Huff was out there along with Jim Catcavage and Alan Webb to make the tackle on the play for the New York Giants. 3-0, the Green Bay Packers in the lead, and it is now third down and 10 for Green Bay at the New York Giants, 47. Jerry Kramer kicking a field goal in the first quarter from 26 yards away. The Giants had one deep drive and an interception by Curry broke it up. Here's third and ten now. Starr is uh, sending Dollar out a little further on the left side, or rather McGee. He fades rolling right, looking to throw and firing hard up the middle, hitting at the 33-yard line, and making the catch on the play was Boyd Dollar. A first down for Green Bay. Dollar, who is six foot five inches tall, 220 pounds, and can do the 100 yard dash in just under 10 seconds. Catching the ball thrown by Bart Starr. And at the 33, it is first and 10 in Giant territory. And Bart Starr is hit on six out of 10. Again, Dollar going out wide to the right, and McGee's swinging out to the left side. First and 10. Starr setting up the pass again. Being rushed, and Dick Mojaleski gets him back at the 44-yard line. The 260-pound defensive left tackle of the New York Giants, Dick Mojaleski, came pouring through and spilled in for a loss of 11 back at the 44 to make it second and 21. So Starr feeling the pressure. Second down and 21. At the Giant 44, eight minutes and 50 seconds left to play in the first half. There is timeout on the field with the score, Green Bay 3, New York nothing. John, hmm? you know, we've been looking at houses for a long time, and I think we should buy that ranch house we saw. It seems to have everything we want. I'm not so sure. Maybe we could do better by building our own home. Whether you buy or build your next home, you'll find the services of one man indispensable. He's a home loan specialist, and he's ready to serve you at any of America's insured savings and loan associations. He'll give you sound advice on financing your home, the down payment, the interest, the taxes, the monthly payments. And knowing what you can afford, he'll tailor a convenient home loan to meet your needs. Insured Savings and Loan Associations help over one million families a year buy or build their own homes. In fact, more home loans are made by Insured Savings and Loan Associations than by all other financial institutions combined. So when you find the home of your dreams, stop in at your nearby Insured Savings and Loan Association for a home loan personalized to your budget requirements, plus friendly, helpful service by home loan specialists. The Green Bay Packers are leading the New York Giants by a score of 3 to nothing. They have the ball on the New York 44-yard line. It is second and 21. The Packers have nine first downs in this game. The Giants have a total of five. We have eight minutes and 54 seconds left to play in the first half as Bart Starr brings his team out. The Packer quarterback crouching and ready behind Ringo. Takes and fades. Gets time and fires up the right side, and it is incomplete. He was trying to hit Ron Kramer. The tight end, and Alan Webb was down there providing the coverage on the play to make it third and 21 for Green Bay at the Giant 44. The wind from the northwest at about 20 miles an hour, but down on the surface, we repeat, it is swirling around, so it's difficult to say exactly what role it plays. It changes uh, by the minute. 
so far it has not appeared to be much of a factor in the game. The Giants wearing the sneakers. Some of the Packers are wearing sneakers or the coach's shoe as they come out of the huddle. Third and 21 at the Giant 44. Here's Starr back to throw. Gets time and fires for Kramer. It is incomplete down at the 29-yard line. Again, it was Alan Webb who was out there covering. And it was Robostelli and Cat Cabbage, the Giant ends, who came pouring through on Starr. He had time for just a moment, then it broke down. And it is fourth and 21 at the 44-yard line. Kramer slipped as he was going off the field. Counts and Horner are going back into the deep positions as Max McGee prepares to punt. Counts and Horner standing back at about the 12-yard line. And McGee at about his 42. He gets the snap from center. Big rush by Huff. He gets the kick away. Bouncing at the 19-yard line and rolling on inside the 10 and slowly rolling inside the 6 and on to about the 5. A 42-yard punt by Max McGee. And so the New York Giants take over the ball, trailing by a score of 3 to nothing, with 8 minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half. It's on the 5, first and 10. Three out of nine for Y.A. Tittle throwing. He takes and gives to Webster, who hits the middle, spins away from a man, and then Ray Nisky, the middle guard, takes him and sends him uh, backward. Let's see what the forward progress is. Took it up to about the seven-yard line. So it will be second down, eight yards to go at the seven. The New York Giants trailing three-nothing. Here they come out of the huddle and up to the line of scrimmage. Henry Jordan is back in there defensively now for Green Bay at right tackle. Tittle with it. And he gives to Webster. Webster cracking across the 10, getting out to about the 12-yard line before they can bring him down. Like Bill Quinlan and Willie Davis, the ends are pinching in that time to take him. And so at the 12, it's going to be third down and about three. Here come the Giants. Frank Gifford coming out wide to the right. The ends are in tight. Webster and King set in behind. It is Webster driving over the left tackle position and getting a couple of yards up to the 14. It does not seem to be enough as Herb Adderley and Willie Davis were there to make the tackle. Webster trying to swing over the left side. The ball is being spotted at about the 14-yard line. And the Giants are going to have to kick it. It will be fourth down and about a yard to go. Pitts and Wood go back into the deep position for Green Bay. And Babe Chandler goes in there to do the kicking. He has punted twice, 58 and 50 yards. A tremendous job by Don Chandler today. He is standing back now at his one-yard line as he gets ready to do the booting. A low snap. He gets it away. Just did. And the ball bouncing on the 48-yard line of the Giants now going over into Packer territory where it will be downed at about the 45. A 41-yard kick. And it will be Green Bay's football. First down and 10 to go on their own 45-yard line. Six minutes left to play in the first half. And the Packers lead by a score of three to nothing. They send Max McGee out wide to the left. Boyd Dollar is out to the right. Morning and Taylor in behind Star. The give us the Taylor cracking straight ahead. And Jim picking up short yardage as he came across the 46-yard line and fought onto about the 48. Going in behind Thurston and Skaronsky. And Sam Huff and Jim Patton were there to make the tackle for New York. The ball is spotted actually at the 49 for a gain of four. Make it second down and six yards to go for the Packers as they come out of the huddle and up to the line. Bart Starr looking over the defensive team as he gives his count. Fakes to Taylor, gives to Horning, trying the right side, but Cat Cabbage is riding him. And several other Giants come along to help out. 
He may have uh, picked up a yard on the play as he was trying to drive over the right tackle. He did. He got over to the 49-yard line of the Giants for a gain of two, so it'll be third and four for the Packers. It has been a bruising defensive struggle. No touchdowns in this game. A 26-yard field goal by Jerry Kramer has given the Packers a three-to-nothing edge. Now Max McGee again coming out to the left and Boyd Dollar swinging out to the right side. Third and four at the Giant 49. He handed off that time as he was going back to a running back pouring up the middle. It was Taylor and they were right there to get him and throw him for a loss. Greer and Huff pouring in there for New York and he never had a chance to move the ball. The loss back to the 48-yard line of Green Bay, a loss of four. And so it is fourth down and about eight to go. Counts is going back deep as Max McGee gets ready to punt. He's booting, and a low-line drive kick goes out of bounds. A short kick going out at the 29-yard line of the New York Giants. First and ten for New York at their own 29. Three minutes, 48 seconds to play in the first half. The Packers lead by a score of three to nothing. Y.A. Tittle brings them out. He's fading back to pass. A big rush, a screen to King. He's over the 30 and hit down by Henry Jordan on a savage tackle. Up at the 34-yard line. A gain of five yards on the play to make it second down and five yards to go for the New York Giants. A screen to Phil King. King has developed into a fine running back for New York this year. He was captain of the Vanderbilt team back in 1957. And he set an all-time school rushing record there. Big and strong. Second and five at the 34 of New York. Y.A. Tittle. On a draw play, gives to King again. Fumble, scramble, and it is grabbed by the Packers. The Green Bay Packers have come up with a ball, and Ray Nitschke is the man who fell on it at the 28-yard line after Willie Davis had come pouring in there to hit Phil King. So Green Bay takes over the ball at the New York Giants' 28-yard line, first down and 10, with three minutes and six seconds left to play in the first half, and the Packers leading by a score of three to nothing. Green Bay coming out of the huddle. McGee coming out about five yards, split off the uh, left tackle on the left side. Dollar is out to the right. This is Horning. He may pass. He throws down on the right side, and he hits Dollar down at the 10-yard line. And he gets into about the eight. Horning took the ball from Starr. Ran to his right and threw the ball downfield. Dollar made the catch. Patton made the tackle. And it is in at the 8-yard line, a 28-yard, a 20-yard pickup, and it is first down and goal to go for the Packers on the 8. Boyd Dollar again going out to the right, and Max McGee swings out on the left side. Starr checking with his running backs in behind him. First and goal. Bart Starr with it. Gives to Jimmy Taylor, finds an opening, and goes for the score! Jim Taylor cracking over the middle and going for the touchdown, and it is nine to nothing, Green Bay. Now we'll have the try for the point after touchdown. Jim Ringall threw a big block that time. Bart Starr is going to be holding for Jerry Kramer. The snap is put down. The kick is in the air. And it is good. There is timeout on the field with the score. Green Bay 10 and New York nothing. There is no getting away from the fact that a college education is an expensive investment. Yet more and more young people are entering colleges each year. Will your children be among the fortunate ones? When they are ready for college, will you be ready with the funds? All over the country, insured savings and loan associations are helping parents save to meet the cost of college education. The earlier you start, the less you will have to put aside each month. And remember, at an insured savings and loan association, excellent earnings help your savings grow fast. 
with safety. So start now. Open a savings account at your nearby Insured Savings and Loan Association and add to it regularly. You can open an account in the name of each of your children. Each account insured up to $10,000 by the Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation, a United States government agency. The clock at Yankee Stadium showing two minutes and 39 seconds left to play in the first half. And the Green Bay Packers have taken a 10 to nothing lead over the New York Giants as Jim Taylor has just slammed eight yards for a touchdown. And now Willie Wood is going to be kicking off. And uh, as happened on the opening kickoff of the game, Earl Groh is going to have to uh, hold the ball for him because there have been gusts of wind down on the field. Wood is ready. Counts and Horner are back deep, and they're standing at about the 10-yard line on the Giants. The kick is coming upfield, bouncing at the 21-yard line. It goes to Counts at his 9. He's up at 15, up the middle of the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, almost into the open and nailed at the 41-yard line by Willie Wood, who kicked off the ball. It almost looked like Johnny Counts was going the distance that time as he took it out to the 41-yard line from his 9. So the Giants take over first and ten on their own 41. Y.A. Tittle brings him out. He gives to Webster, churning up the middle and diving forward to the 44-yard line where he's taken down by Ray Nitschke and Dan Curry, the middle guard and the left linebacker. On the 44-yard line, it's going to be second down and seven. And now the two-minute warning. The officials informing uh, the benches that we have two minutes left. Ten to nothing in favor of Green Bay. Jerry Kramer kicking a 26-yard field goal in the first quarter. Jim Taylor going for a touchdown in the second. From eight yards out. Second down and seven for New York on their own 44. Frank Gifford wide to the right. Tittle faking and fading to pass, throwing up the right side. Joe Walton makes the catch at the 41-yard line of Green Bay and immediately goes out of bounds. So he stops the clock, and it's first down New York. They had Gifford going down deep, and then uh, Walton, the tight end, slanted to the outside to take the ball at the 41-yard line in Green Bay territory. Del Schaffner going out wide to the left. Jesse Whittington is out there to cover on him. Tittle takes from Wateka. Draw play to Phil King, and he drives up the middle and picks up short yardage, getting it in there to about the 38-yard line. And Bill Quinlan, the 250-pound right end, makes the tackle on the play for the Packers with help from Henry Jordan, playing alongside him at right tackle. And at the 39-yard line... And so it'll be second down and eight with a minute and 30 to play in the first half. Tittle is back to throw, and he's firing for Gifford, and it is incomplete upfield. Another rush that time by the Green Bay Packers as Quinlan was in there and Davis and Bill Forrester also. And it is third and eight at the 39-yard line. A minute and 24 left to play in the first half. 10 nothing Green Bay leads. Schaffner split left about eight yards off Rosie Brown. Y.H. Hittle again back to pass, throwing this time up the middle for Walton. It is incomplete around the 25-yard line. Hank Greminger was back there providing the coverage on the play along with Willie Wood. And so it will be fourth down and eight to go for New York at the 39. And they're going to uh, try a field goal. Ralph Guglielmi is going in there to do the holding. And Chandler is going to be trying from about 47 yards away into this swirling wind at Yankee Stadium. Chandler standing at his 49. The ball is put down. He boots it. And it is no good. It is off to the right. And Green Bay, with a minute and 13 left, will take over the ball on the 20. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady 810 on your radio dial.
A minute then, 13 to play in the first half, and Green Bay, with a 10 to nothing lead, takes over on their own 20. First down and 10 for the Packers as they come out. Horning and Taylor are split behind the tackles as Bart Starr gets in behind Jim Ringo. Starr taking. He gives it to Horning, driving over the right side of the line, and he is taken down by Rosie Greer, the 290-pound defensive right tackle from Penn State. He was taken down a yard in back of the line of scrimmage. So at the 19, it's going to be second down and 11 yards to go for the Packers. The clock moving and down to 50 seconds now. The Packers, with 30 seconds to put the ball in play, come out of the huddle. They send Max McGee out wide on the left. Dollar again is out on the right side. Jim Taylor has it, and he's driving up over the right side of the line, getting across the line of scrimmage, and picking up short yardage on the play. Sam Huff hitting him down. He took the ball out that time from uh, the 19 to the 22-yard line, so it's going to be third down and eight yards to go. Third and eight at the 22. The clock is moving. We probably will not get off another play. It's down to nine seconds and moving. And now timeout is being called on the field. The Giants are calling for it. Or Bart Starr actually makes the call. And the uh, Packers now, with the timeout, perhaps are discussing their strategy, and they may just decide to uh, run the ball into the line, or they may want to try a long bomb. They lead by a score of 10 to nothing, and the clock shows eight seconds left to play. In the first half at Yankee Stadium in New York, where the temperature today is 20 degrees and a wind from the northwest is blowing in from about 20 to 25 miles an hour. And it is actually doing a lot of swirling down there on the uh, stadium turf. Dick Pessinen has gone in at defensive left halfback at the corner spot for the New York Giants, replacing Erich Barnes. Now the Packers are ready and they come out of the huddle with third down and eight to go at the 22. Ringo over the ball at center. Bart Starr, quarterback. And he gives it to Taylor, who goes cracking up the right side and fights forward. Cat Cabbage has a hold of him. He got out across the 25-yard line, close to the 26, and that's all. The gun goes off, and the teams are heading for the dressing room. That is the end of the first half with the score. The Green Bay Packers, 10 and the New York Giants, nothing. In a few days, the nation's insured savings and loan associations will say Happy New Year to their savers with a dividend to 32 million people. If you aren't sharing in these generous earnings, why don't you start the new year right by opening a savings account at one of the conveniently located insured savings and loan associations? All you do is go in, give your name, address, and signature, and the amount you want to start your account with. It's that simple. And what other New Year's resolution can you make that's so important to your future? You'll get a passbook that will make better reading each year as your savings grow, helped by excellent earnings. So how about it? Remember, you have to plan ahead to get ahead. Stop in at your nearby Insured Savings and Loan Association and get the new year off to a profitable start by opening that savings account. Savings are insured by a United States government agency. This is Ted Moore back at Yankee Stadium along with Ken Coleman and the Green Bay Packers are out in front of the New York Giants by a score of 10 to nothing. Before we talk to our halftime guests, let's uh, briefly recap how the score came about. With seven minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the first period after a savage defensive battle, Jerry Kramer kicked a 26-yard field goal to put the Green Bay Packers on the board and give them a 3 to nothing lead. The Packers had driven from the Green Bay 20-yard line in 11 plays down to the Giants 18, but they were stymied there. They went to the field goal, and Jerry Kramer booted it over. That was the only scoring in the first period of play. However, with three seconds remaining in the first quarter, Kramer attempted another field goal from the 37-yard line that was no good. And the first quarter ended with the score, the Green Bay Packers three and the Giants nothing. In the second quarter of play, with two minutes and 39 seconds remaining, and again these two teams had put on a savage defensive battle, 
Phil King fumbled the ball, and it was recovered by the Green Bay Packers. Ray Nitschke, the middle linebacker, on the New York 28-yard line. Actually, that was with two minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Then Paul Horning took a handoff from Bart Starr and ran the option out to his right side, threw the pass, complete to Boyd Dollar on the New York Giants' eight-yard line. Dollar went out of bounds on the far side of the field. On the very next play, Jimmy Taylor popped right up the middle for eight yards and the touchdown. Jerry Kramer added the extra point, and the Green Bay Packers were out in front by a score of ten to nothing. And that's the way the scoring ended in the first half of action. Actually, the New York Giants threatened just twice in the first half. They moved down deep into Packer territory in the first quarter of play, and then Dan Curry intercepted a Y.A. Tittle pass on the Packer 15-yard line. Then later on, near the end of the first half, the Giants drove into Packer territory, were held by the Packer defense, and Chandler attempted a field goal from the 49-yard line that was no good. Johnny Counts almost made it all the way for the New York Giants, however, because he came up with a fine return, taking Willie Wood's short kickoff on his nine-yard line and returning it to the Giants' 41-yard line, where Willie Wood made the tackle, and Wood was the last man between Counts and that goal line. So there's a possibility that had Counts been able to get by Willie Wood, the score in this football game right now would be 10-7 to rather than 10 to nothing. But that's the way it stands. The Green Bay Packers out in front, and in championship football games, the Packers now for three halves have shut out the New York Giants, winning 37 to nothing last year and holding a 10 to nothing advantage here at halftime. Moving into our broadcast booth is the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mr. Art Rooney. And may we welcome you to the NBC microphones, Mr. Rooney. How has this first half affected you so far? Well, it's kind of cold outside, but it's an excellent ball game. And I believe that the fumble that the Green Bay Packers recovered and went on for a touchdown may make the difference in this ball game. In other words, the uh, the way these two teams are performing defensively, you don't think that there's going to be a break here in the second half, and we might see uh, quite a bit more scoring. Well, no, I don't agree with that. There can be a lot, but uh, uh, the way the first half went, uh, a break can, breaks mean a lot to the ball game. I think the winner of this ball game. Mm-hmm. Has there been anything at all in the first half that uh, surprised you at all in the way either of these teams came out? Well, the surprise uh, to me has been that the game has been so well played because the conditions, that is, the wind and the field is kind of slippy, and I think they've, they've played excellent considering these two facts. Mr. Rooney, your uh, ball club will be performing under slightly warmer conditions uh, down in the playoff bowl in Miami. Uh, how are the how are the Steelers getting ready for this ball game? When does your team assemble again? Well, they assembled this morning and had practice this morning, and of course they're looking at the, this game right now in a little different climate than we're looking at it, but our ball club is taking this game very seriously, and we hope that we can win the ball game uh, and start just a vacation for our ball club. That should be quite a ball game, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Detroit Lions. You undoubtedly have seen a great number of these NFL championship playoffs. Is there any particular one that sticks in your mind over the years? One of the ones that sticks in my mind over the years was, I believe, maybe was one of the first ones that was ever played at the Polo Grounds. Uh, between the halves, the uh, Giants came out with Snickers on, and the Bears uh, looked uh, with awe, and they went to Hallis and asked him what, what's happening. What could they do? And he told them, step on their feet. That's one of the outstanding things that I remember about uh, the championship ball games. But, of course, over the years, we've seen a great many good ones and some that haven't been so good. Well, evidently, in that ball game, the Bears didn't do enough stomping because uh, the Giants, with their sneakers, managed to go on for a victory. Uh, this field down here is frozen, and uh, a lot of the players are wearing... Uh, rippled uh, rippled soles on their shoes. We might mention that right now a tremendous gust of wind came up and it's blowing paper all over the field. I noticed a couple of times there during the first half that even when the ball was sitting on the ground uh, prior to being put into play, the wind would move it a little bit. And, of course, we were having trouble with the kickoffs. Uh, this, this, of course, affects play uh, tremendously. Uh, weather... 
would you say is uh, is a great factor in these ball games? Or does the enthusiasm that the players have carry them carry them over these cold temperatures? Well, the enthusiasm, of course, carries them over. But uh, weather is a factor, and I'm surprised that the weather hasn't been more of a factor today. And the ball players are certainly up and playing a great game, considering the win. All right. Mr. Art Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Thank you a lot. We'll be back with more color in just a minute. What does a man want most in his life? A safe and happy home for his children and his wife. He wants a piece of land he can call his own. A tiny patch of earth where his future may be grown. Be it 50 by 100 or acres by the score, his own piece of land is what a man is working for. When a man wants the money for that home of his own, he goes to see his man and his family have a home of their own. Thanks to their friends at the savings and loan. Thanks to their friends at the savings and loan. Halftime at Yankee Stadium in New York, and uh, Jim Kensel, who is the director of public... ...has come by our booth, and Jim, I understand that uh, during uh, the first half and uh, just at the end of it, you had an opportunity to talk on the uh, phones uh, with the men down on the field, and that situation is getting worse all the time, it appears. Yes, Ken. Uh, throughout the first half, I have been in constant contact with men on both sidelines. They say that the field is frozen along the sidelines, and it's difficult for the players to keep their feet. Also, the wind is swirling around in gusts. It is blowing basically straight into the press box and therefore probably not favoring either team or disfavoring either team. However, the gusts uh, at times could cause uh, a pass or something to uh, go awry. Uh, but uh, they tell me the players are just as pepped up and spirited and warmed up down there and it doesn't seem to be affecting their play. Well, Jim, uh, thank you very much for passing this information along to us. It's certainly been a hard-fought football game so far. Hasn't it? Yes, it has, Ken. And I'd just like to mention that the band, despite the wind conditions, the Cardinal Dockery band from Philadelphia is doing an excellent job out on that field right now. Well, they certainly are, and the fans here at Yankee Stadium are enjoying it very much. Thank you very much, thank Jim you, Ken. The first half of the Pro Championship football game has been a presentation of the Savings and Loan Foundation. It has been brought to you with the best wishes for a brighter financial future from your nearby insured Savings and Loan Association. Saving regularly today means living better tomorrow. Start the savings habit. Open an account at your nearby insured Savings and Loan Association. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. You know, everyone should be listening to this exciting football game from the comfort of their own home. And if not, now is the time to promise yourself that you'll talk with the folks at Schenectady Savings and Loan Association about modern home financing plans. Schenectady Savings and Loan Association can tell you about the many extra features, including prepayment privileges, terms up to 30 years, as little as 3% down payment needed, and many more. Choose two from all three types of loans. Finance the purchase of a home of your own. In the receiving department, Del Schaffner has caught two, King has caught two, Walton has caught one for New York, and for Green Bay, Dollar has two, Ron Kramer has two, and Jim Taylor has three of the screen variety. And Ted Moore, uh, I must say that as uh, halftime moves along, it appears that the wind condition down on the field is becoming much more severe than it was uh, during the first half of action. In fact, some of the benches, now that the players are not down there on them, have been blowing out onto the surface. And it could be that the wind, Jim Kensel mentioned that it is coming toward the press box, so it would not necessarily favor either team, but it begins to look like it could hamper both teams in the second half. And now I see that the uh, New York Giants, who are trailing in this game by a score of 10 to nothing, are coming out to the benches, and the Packers are also on their way out now. In case you just tuned in, the score is Green Bay 10 and the New York Giants nothing. Julie London sings the Marlboro song.
Why don't you settle back, settle back. and have a full-flavored smoke? Settle back, settle back with a Marlboro. Make yourself comfortable whenever you smoke. Have a Marlboro cigarette. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro filter, filter, flavor, flavor, pack or box. Both teams have come back onto the field. The Cardinal Darkety High School Band of Philadelphia, which has done a splendid job entertaining the fans here at Yankee Stadium at halftime are still out there as the uh, teams warm up along the sidelines. The Packers with a 10 to nothing lead as we get ready for the second half of action at Yankee Stadium in New York in the National Football League Championship game. And uh, to bring you the action of the second half, it is my pleasure to introduce once again the voice on radio for the Green Bay Packers, Ted Moore. Thank you very much, Ken. During halftime, we noticed that there were a number of hats blown out of the grandstand and uh, rolling across the field. And as the band performs down there, we can see right at the moment at least three of the band members' hats on the field, which have blown off. And that might give you some idea of the intensity of this wind. There are newspapers, programs, and uh, all sorts of debris from the stands blowing across the field, and we're going to have trouble with that during the second half. And we'll be set to go with the second half kickoff in just a moment. Ready? Take a nice, easy beat. Mix in the bass. Now add the vibes. There you go. Each one's good, but together they're great. Marlboro cigarettes are a lot like that. They've got a special combination that gives you full flavor in a filter cigarette. Marlboro's got the combination, the famous Richmond recipe of ripe golden tobaccos, combined with the exclusive select trait filter. Marlboro, plenty rich, yet plenty mild. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro, the filter cigarette with the unfiltered taste. As this second half gets underway, the Green Bay Packers will have the choice. Undoubtedly, they will choose to receive. And this will mean that for the first time this afternoon, the New York Giants will be kicking off. Don Chandler, of course, will be doing the booting for them. Likely deep men for the Green Bay Packers will be Tom Moore and Herb Adderley. So far, the teams have not moved out onto the field because the band is still performing down in front of the Giants' bench. As we mentioned... During halftime, this has been quite a savage defensive battle between these two clubs. Very little in the way of surprises because both of these teams play a conservative type of defense. Coach Vince Lombardi says of the Giants, they stand there in their 4-3 defense and dare you to run on them. And the Green Bay Packers pattern their play pretty well along the same line. The Packers are doing a little more stunning than they have throughout the regular season. For the most part, this means that their linebackers and their uh, defensive line are shifting positions from time to time in an attempt to confuse the Giants quarterback, Y.A. Tittle. But for the most part, we've got uh, two conservative defensive ball clubs operating on the field. Well, we'll see if Don Chandler has any better luck teeing up his football than Willie Wood had for the Green Bay Packers. He's got it teed up on the 40-yard line right now. He's not taking any chances. We're going to have a member of the kickoff unit Dick Lynch holding the ball. Herb Adderley and Tom Moore deep for the Green Bay Packers, and we're set to go with the second half. Chandler moves forward, gets the kick away, a high one, but coming down short. Tommy Moore runs at it on the 15, up to 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, down the sideline, the 45, and to the 50-yard line. Fumbles on the 50-yard line. I believe the Packers recover. There was a scramble for the ball. And I believe that Ken Iman got on top of that football. Tom Moore with a 35-yard run back from his own 15 up to the midfield stripe and dead on the 50-yard line, fumbled as he was hit, 
The ball rolled toward this sideline, and Ken Iman fell on it for the Packers. They're in possession, first and ten, right at midfield. They break out of the huddle. Come up the line of scrimmage. All throw center Jim Ringo over the ball. Bart Starr calling the signal. Max McGee flanked on the left side. Starr takes hands off to Jimmy Taylor. Drives right up the middle. And is grabbed off at the line of scrimmage by Dick Modulewski. Taylor may have bowled his way forward for perhaps a yard. Tom Scott came in to help out with that tackle. The officials place the football, just barely nosing into giant territory. Pick up of the length of the football by Taylor. Second down, ten yards to go. The Packers are back in the huddle. Giants defense deploys. Bob Skaronski in in the left side tackle for the Packers. Now we've got a strong right formation. Starr fakes to Taylor, goes back to throw, fires the pass, complete to Dollar. Down near the Giants' 41-yard line. And Erich Barnes immediately forced Dollar out of bounds. Gain on the play of nine yards. Puts the ball on the Giants' 41-yard line. Third down and a yard to go for the Green Bay Packers. They're out of the huddle now. Again, they're strong to the right. With Boyd Dollar flanked on the right side. Starr counts off. Takes the ball. Hands off for Taylor. He's shooting for the first down. Fumble. Packers recover, but back of the line of scrimmage. And it was Fuzzy Thurston falling on the ball. Back on the 42-yard line. Tom Scott hit Jimmy Taylor. The ball popped out of his hands. The Packers recover. Fourth down. Two yards to go. And they'll be forced to punt. Going deep for the Giants. Sam Horner and Johnny Counts standing down on the Giants' 15-yard line. And we've got Max McGee ready to punt for the Packers. The line of scrimmage of the Giants, 42. There's the snap. Low. McGee picks it up. Gets the kick away. Angling toward the far side. Gets a bounce. Down to the 10. And inside. Rolling dead on the six-yard line of the New York Giants. Well, Max McGee hasn't had any height to his punts this afternoon, but he's gotten some good bounces. That one was good for 36 yards. Moving the ball down to the Giants' six-yard line. And now the Giants go to the attack, trailing 10 to nothing early in the third quarter. Y.A. Tittle, the quarterback, takes the ball, hands off to Webster, the fullback, and he cracks across the 10-yard line. Or he was brought down by right tackle Henry Jordan with some help from Ray Nitschke. So the Giants move the ball a little bit out from the shadow of their goal post. It's on the 11-yard line. Second down and five yards to go for the Giants. Again, Y.A. Tittle counts off. And again, the ball goes to fullback Alex Webster, and he's loose around the right side on the sweep. But caught by the Packers secondary at the 21-yard line. And it was Hank Greminger coming up from the left safety position to make the stop for the Green Bay Packers. But Webster moved the ball for the first down. And it's being spotted by the officials on the 22-yard line. Nosing up toward the 23. First and 10 at that point for the Giants. Y.A. Tittle, the quarterback now, sends Gifford out to the right. Hands off to Webster. And Webster slides off one tackler. Makes it up to about the 25-yard line where Ray Nitschke stops him. And there was a pickup of three yards on the play. Second down. A little more than seven yards to go. Packers out in front of the Giants. Ten to nothing. Eleven minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Again, Tittle takes the ball. This time he goes back to throw. Being rushed, but gets the pass away. And it's complete to Del Schaffner at the 37-yard line of the New York Giants. He's pushed out of bounds immediately by Jesse Whittington, but that will be good enough for the first down, of course, for the Giants. First and ten for the Giants. The ball just across. They're on 36-yard line. Again, they're out of the huddle. Ray Wittek over the ball at center. Strong right formation with Gifford flanked out there. The ball goes to King, the left halfback, on a crisscross. He goes over the right side. And moves across the 40 to the 41 where Dave Hanner along with Henry Jordan bring him down for the Green Bay Packers. Pick up on the play of four yards. Makes it second down and six yards to go for the Giants on their own 41-yard line. And again, they're out of the huddle. Again, it's Gifford. Flank to the right side. 
Handoff goes to Webster. Webster drives up the middle, runs into trouble, slides off to the right side, but is caught by Bill Quinlan and brought to the ground. But he managed to drive ahead for a couple of yards. Ball is being placed on the 44-yard line of the New York Giants. Third down and three yards to go at that point. Giants go back in the huddle. Ten minutes, 25 seconds remain in the third quarter. Packers out in front by a score of 10 to nothing. Field goal in the first quarter, touchdown in the second quarter. Tittle counts off. Hands off to his fullback. Webster drives up the middle and moves across very close to the 50-yard line where Henry Jordan brings him down, along with Willie Wood. And Y.A. Tittle has been using his heavy-duty back, Alex Webster, with a fair amount of success here in the opening minutes of the third quarter. Webster carrying on three out of four plays thus far, and he's moved the ball to midfield. First and ten at that point for the Giants. Tittle sets his team. Gifford flanks to the right, fakes a handoff to Webster. Being chased now by Bill Forrester, gets the pass away. It is incomplete. It was intended for Del Schaffner. Down in Packer territory on the 36-yard line. Schaffner being covered by Jesse Whittington. Bill Quinlan and Bill Forrester putting a good rush on giant quarterback Y.A. Tittle. Ball in midfield right on the 50-yard line. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Giants at that point. Back to defense has Bill Quinlan, Henry Jordan, Dave Hanner, and Willie Davis in the front line. Forrester, Nitschke, and Curry, the linebackers, Whittington, Adderley, Greminger, and Wood in the defensive backfield. Tittle counts off, fakes a handoff to Webster, goes back to throw. Willie Davis puts the rush on him, fires a pass, incomplete. It was thrown in the vicinity of Alex Webster. And again, the Packers put on quite a rush. Tittle has completed six out of 16 passes thus far in this championship football game. Del Schaffner playing the split end for the New York Giants. Rosie Brown and Daryl Dess on the left side of the line. Ray Witek at center. Greg Larson and Jack Stroud on the right side. Joe Walton at tight end. The backfield, Tittle, King, Webster, and Gifford at the flanker position. Now they come out of the huddle. Third down, ten yards to go. Tittle sets his team. The ball was never centered. We've got a lot of action down there. And we're going to have a penalty called on somebody. Officials are conferring now. The Packers were offside, but were they drawn offside? That's the question. We might have a combination of illegal motion and offside, but it's being ruled as offside against the Green Bay Packers. Five-yard penalty moves the ball down to the pack 45-yard line, and it now becomes third down and five yards to go. Joe Morrison is going into the ball game for the New York Giants, replacing Phil King. Morrison, a four-year veteran from Cincinnati, 6'1", 212 pounds. And now it's a triple left formation. Tittle goes back to throw, fires the screen pass, complete to Morrison at the line of scrimmage. He's hit and dropped immediately by Dan Curry. No gain on the play. Maybe the length of the football across the 45-yard line. Fourth down, five yards to go for the New York Giants. Don Chandler comes in to do some more punting. Going deep for the Green Bay Packers, Willie Wood and Elijah Pitts. Standing on the Packers' seven-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the Packers, 45. Chandler on the Giants, 41, to get the kick away. Boots it. Line drive tight, but long and into the Packer end zone. The automatic touchback will come out to the 20-yard line, where it will be first and ten for the Green Bay Packers. A 45-yard boot for Don Chandler. Eight minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Ten to nothing. The Packers out in front of the New York Giants in this championship game from Yankee Stadium. Ted Moore along with Ken Coleman bringing you the play-by-play broadcast. Jim Ringo over the ball now. Star sets his team. Flanker back to the right is Boyd Dollar. The handoff goes to Horning. Horning running to the right. It's hit behind the line of scrimmage by Bill Winter. Dropped. Back on the 15-yard line for a five-yard loss. Winters, Sam Huff, and Jim Katkavich all driving in on that play. And that is the complete left side 
of the giant defense, so they had to play pretty well diagnosed as Horning took the handoff from Starr and went to his right. Second down, 15 yards to go for the Packers on their own 15-yard line. Neither team has been able to gain any momentum here in the second half. Starr fakes the handoff to Horning. Throws. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Dick Lynch on the Packer 30-yard line. The pass was intended for Max McGee, and Lynch almost picked it off. Third down, 15 yards to go for the Packers on their own 15-yard line. 10 to nothing. Green Bay out in front. Eight minutes remain in the third quarter of play. The 30th Annual National Football League Championship Battle. Green Bay Packers involved in it for the third straight time and looking for their second straight victory over these New York Giants. Giants seeking revenge and the championship. Difference of about $2,000 per man between being a winner and a loser. Starr goes back on third down. Looks downfield. He's being rushed, but gets the pass away. Fires it. Incomplete. Intended for McGee on the 35-yard line. Underthrown by Bart Starr. McGee covered very well by Alan Webb. So the Packers run three plays and will be forced to punt. Max McGee has done the kicking so far. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Giants. Max McGee's kick was blocked by Eric Barnes. The ball rolled around. Several players attempted to recover it. It squirted into the end zone. We have a light standard directly in our way here, and we could not see whether or not they had ruled it as a touchdown. Don Chandler will attempt the extra point. Chandler will attempt the extra point. Guglielmi holding. The ball is snapped. The kick is good. And there's time out on the field with the score. The Green Bay Packers 10, the New York Giants 7. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter, flavor, pack or box. Filter. Hey, wait a minute. I thought it was filter, flavor, flip-top box. No, that's the old song. Now Marlboro comes in a king-size soft pack, too, so they change the words. Oh. You get a lot to like with the Marlboro filter, flavor, pack, or box. Same cigarette? Same good Marlboro flavor both ways. Some people like the soft pack, some like the box, so we give them a choice. Hmm. Fits right into the song, too, doesn't it? You get a lot to like with a Marlboro filter, flavor, pack box. Marlboro, the filter cigarette with the unfiltered taste. The Green Bay Packers 10, the New York Giants 7. Seven minutes and 34 seconds remain in the third quarter of this championship football game. Erich Barnes blocked Max McGee's punt. Jim Collier fell on it in the end zone for the touchdown. Chandler added the extra point. Now Chandler will kick off deep for the Packers. We've got Tom Moore and Herb Adderley. Packers lead cut to three points. There's the boot by Chandler. A long one coming down to Moore on the four-yard line. He's up to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. Hit, keeps his feet, moves to the 30 and to the 33-yard line before he's finally brought down by the Blue Jersey Giants. And it was Reed Bohovich making the original contact for the Giants. The ball is placed midway between the 33 and the 34-yard line. So the Packers find themselves in possession once again, but this time their lead has been cut to three points. Now the quarterback. Dollar split on the right side. McGee flanked on the left side. And Starr indicates there's too much noise as players can't hear the signals. So the Packers go back into the huddle again as the officials motion the crowd for just a bit more silence. 
Now the Packers break out again. Hometown crowd here in New York picking up the chant, beat Green Bay. Ringo over the ball. Start takes, handoff goes to Taylor. Wow, and he is hit by Rosie Greer. Big Rosie Greer, 6'5", 290 pounds, was waiting for him right at the line of scrimmage. Hit him and bounced him back a couple of yards. Taylor loses a yard on the play. Second down, 11 to go for the Packers. Ball on Green Bay's 32-yard line. Six minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the third quarter of action. 10 to 7, the Packers out in front. Strong right formation this time. Dollar flank to the right side. And off goes to Jimmy Taylor, and Taylor trying to sweep to the left is hit, and once again loses Johnny. Back to the 30-yard line as Dick Modulewski came across from left to right and with help from Tom Scott brought him down on the 30. A loss of two on the play, and it's third down. 13 yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. Slightly more than six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Packers out in front by three points, 10 to seven over the Eastern champions, the New York Giants. Ringo over the ball once again. Dollar flank to the right side. Star takes, fakes, goes back to throw, looks downfield, fires a pass. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Bill Winter. It was intended for tight end Ron Kramer. On the 40-yard line of the Packers. And the Packers' punting unit comes onto the field once again. Green Bay will be forced to give up the football. Going deep for the Giants. Johnny Counts and Sam Horner standing down on the Giants' 40-yard line. Max McGee will be kicking. Line of scrimmage is the Packers' 30. McGee standing on the 15-yard line. Ringo over the ball. There's the snap. McGee gets the kick away. A low one coming down to Horner who fumbles the ball. Recovered by the Packers. I believe there was another fumble there. There's a tremendous pile up down on the Giants' 41-yard line. Lou Carpenter tried to scoop up that ball on the dead run. It dribbled away from his fingertips, and then the pile began, and the Green Bay Packers did recover. I believe it was Ray Nitschke. Nitschke coming up with the football finally for the Green Bay Packers. Down on the Giants, 42-yard line. First and ten at that point for the Packers. So the breaks begin to mount up here in the third quarter. Packers out in front, 10 to 7. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter of play. Style the quarterback. Hands off to Jimmy Taylor. Hole on the left side. Taylor is down to the 35. Spins away from the tackler there. Tripped up, falling forward to about the 31-yard line. Officials place the ball between the 31 and the 30. At the far side of the field. Now they've nosed it up right on the 30-yard line. Taylor runs for 12 yards. Good enough for the first down for the Packers. And once again, they have driven deep into Giant territory. First and 10 on the Giants' 30-yard line. Packers break out of the huddle. And we have had a timeout called on the field with the score. The Green Bay Packers 10, the New York Giants 7. Say, you know how to get better shaves. Get a PAL adjustable injector razor. Because PAL's the world's first stainless steel injector razor. PAL's got the beauty of stainless steel. PAL's got the balance of a precision instrument. PAL's got brains. It's... Second down, 10 yards to go. Packers on the football on the Giants' 30-yard line. Bart Starr takes his team back into the huddle. Well, this is the climax of the football season that began for the pros way back in August when the Packers met the college All-Stars in Chicago. Starr takes from Ringo on the draw play. Gives to Taylor. Taylor drives across the line of scrimmage down inside the 30 to about the 26 where he's met head-on by Tom Scott with some help from Sam Huff and Rosie Greer. They wrestled Taylor to the ground. They're still unpiling the players down there, getting them untangled. Now they're placing the football. Just short of the 26-yard line. Pick up of 
about four yards by Taylor. Makes it third down and six. Packers break out of the huddle once again. Giant defense deploys. And the standard four-man line, three linebackers. Star goes back to throw. The rush is put on him, but he gets the pass away. Over to the sideline. Nice catch by Bart Starr on the 21-yard line. Nice catch by Boyd Dowler on the pass from Bart Starr. He was pushed out of bounds immediately. Giants protested mildly that Starr was out of bounds when he caught the ball. The officials say no. The Packers still short of a first down. Ball is on the 22-yard line. We've got the field goal unit coming in. Ball 20 yards in from this to the west side of the field. So that means that Jerry Kramer will attempt the field goal from the 28-yard line and will be kicking to his left. The ball is snapped. It's placed. The kick. It's long enough. It is good. And the Green Bay Packers go out in front of the New York Giants by a score of 13 to 7 with four minutes remaining here in the third quarter of action. Jerry Kramer just booted his second field goal of the afternoon for the Green Bay Packers. His first one back in the first quarter was from the 26-yard line. This one was good from the 29. So the Packers have a six-point lead, 13 to 7, with exactly four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Willie Wood will kick off for the Green Bay Packers once again. Deep for the New York Giants, Sam Horner and Johnny Counts. Counts has had a fine year. He was playing semi-pro football up in New England when the New York Giants grabbed him off. He's been a good performer for them all season long. Well, here comes the football out from this sideline, and we'll go through the routine of setting it up and holding it so that the wind doesn't blow it off the tee. Earl Groh has been assigned the duty of holding the football. Willie Wood, of course, does the kicking. Right now, he's got the wind at his back, according to the flagpole flag. Moves forward, gets the kick away, and he boots a long one, going clear into the end zone and rolling out of the end zone. Well, that's the longest kickoff of the day, and Wood timed that one just right, because as he booted the ball, the flags were standing out straight behind him, and the wind was with him. That kick carried clear into the end zone. So the New York Giants will take over first and ten on their own 20-yard line. Tittle the quarterback, Webster the fullback, Phil King at left halfback, and Frank Gifford flanked out on the right side. Ray Witeka gets over the ball now. Tittle sets his team, checks that Packer defense. Goes back two steps, fires the short sideline pass. It is complete to Gifford over at the far side of the field at the 25-yard line. He's forced out of bounds immediately by Herb Adderley. They'll give him the forward progress he had up to the pickup of six yards. Tittle to Gifford. Tittle now has completed eight out of 18. And it's second down, four yards to go. Giants out of the huddle. Still a strong right formation. Tittle flanked out there. Walton the tight end. Handoff goes to Webster. Webster tries the left side. Is hit by the Packer defense and down for no gain. Bill Forrester leading the tacklers along with... Bill Quinlan. Third down and four yards to go for the Giants. No gain on that play. Webster carrying. Three minutes remaining in the third quarter. 13 to 7. The Green Bay Packers out in front of the New York Giants in this championship battle. Tittle is set. Takes that short step back. Fires the sideline pass once again to Gifford. Just across the 30 yard stripe for the first down. Gifford at the 33. Knocked out of bounds by Herb Adderley. Well, that's what the pros call the sideline pass or the first down pass. They're not trying to break the line loose for a long game. They're just shooting for that short yardage. And Gifford has been loose on two out of the last three plays. First down for the Giants. Ball on their own 32. Kittle goes back now. He's looking. Gets the pass away. Batted away from Del Schopner by Jesse Whittenton. Whittenton came up behind Schopner there and batted that one right out of his hands. Was intended for Schaffner down about the 43-44 yard line. 
Now the clock has ticked away to two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Packers on a six-point lead, 13 to 7. Packer defense deploys Willie Wood and Hank Greminger, the deep men, against Y.A. Tittle's passing attack. The will take over the ball. Tittle counts off, being chased as he goes back to throw, but gets the pass away down the middle. It is complete to Del Schaffner. He's tackled immediately by Whittington on the 40-yard line. Give him the forward progress up to the 42. And for Schaffner, that's the fourth pass he's caught today. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WBY Schenectady. Well, during that pause for identification, the chain gang came out from this sideline. We're having a measurement now to see whether or not the Giants have themselves a first down. It is not. Third down and a yard to go. Jess Whittenden is covering Dell Schaffner today. Whittenden of the Packers. Schaffner of the Giants, of course. Formerly, both of them were with the Rams, and they were roommates. One of the quirks of fate. The tech over the ball. Tittle takes, hands off to Webster, drives up the middle. He may have picked up that first down. Henry Jordan, Ray Nitschke, Dave Hanner, the center of the Packer defense, all in on the tackle. And you can tell by the cheer that goes up from this hometown crowd that the Giants have just picked themselves up a first down. Webster running for the short yardage. First and ten for the Giants in their own 43-yard line. They're out of the huddle now. Bitter cold down on the field. Temperature about 20. Wind blowing strong. Tittle goes back to throw. Fires the short one. Complete to Walton at the 50-yard line down in the Packer territory. And punched out of bounds by Willie Wood on the Packer 47-yard line. The football being brought in the 20 yards from this side of the field. So the Giants are on the move now in the Packer territory, and they have a first down on the Green Bay 47-yard line. Why Tittle takes his team out of the huddle. Again, Gifford is flanked to the right. Deuce backfield, King and Webster. Tittle puts the ball on his hip, rolls out to the right to pass, fires, incomplete, intended for Del Schaffner, and interference is going to be called against Willie Wood. Uh Uh-oh. And Willie Wood lost his temper, got up to protest to the official, and nudged the official, and I believe that Willie Wood is being sent out of the football game. He is. Interference called against Willie Wood. When he saw the call, he bounced up right into the official and Willie Wood has been excused from this football game that means that John Simank or Howard Williams will come into the game into the Packer defensive backfield Johnny Simank who was a starter at safety last year has moved into the lineup and now Herb Adderley is talking to one of the officials And this is the first big rhubarb of this football game. The act by Willie Wood, as it looks here, was unintentional. He was bouncing up to protest the call, but he did ram into the official, Tom Kelleher. And we are now having the penalty marked off against the Green Bay Packers. Pass interference, 15 yards from the point of infraction. Moves the ball down to the Green Bay Packer. 18-yard line. Personal foul. And it's first and ten at that point for the New York Giants. One minute remains in the third quarter. Packers lead 13-7. to And they're playing now without the services of Willie Wood, who led the league in interception this past season. Now we're set for more football. Y.A. Tittle checks his lineup. Starts the count. Goes back to throw. Gets good protection. Fires the bomb. The long one incomplete. Way over the head of Dell Schaffner, who is down in the end zone. 54 seconds showing on the clock now. 
here in the third quarter as the incompleted pass stops the clock. Packers hold on to that six-point lead. 13 to 7. Little takes his team back into the huddle. Packer defense sets up. Bill Quinlan, Henry Jordan, Dave Hanner, and Willie Davis across that front line. They dig in as Tittle starts counting. Hands off to Phil King. Double reverse to Gifford. And Gifford laterals back to Tittle again as Gifford was trapped. Tittle fires a pass. Incomplete and almost intercepted by Dan Curry down at the 12-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Well, there was a razzle-dazzle play and a bit impromptu. Y.A. Tittle took the ball, handed off to Phil King, a reverse to Frank Gifford, and Gifford was almost tackled by Bill Forrester. He underarmed a pass back to Y.A. Tittle, who had started the whole thing, and Tittle, in desperation, heaved one over to the far side that was almost intercepted by Dan Curry. Third down, 10 yards to go for the Giants on the Packer 18-yard line. They're out of the huddle. Schaffner split on the left side. Gifford flanked on the right side. Tittle fakes a handoff. He's being rushed. Hit as he fires the ball. A flag on the play. Pass incomplete down on the 10-yard line. There was a flag on the play, and we may have a roughing the passer penalty call. Bill Quinlan, Willie Davis, moved in fast on Y.A. Tittle. He got the pass away, but the flag on the play indicates an infraction by the Giants. Joe Walton, illegal use of the hands. So that will move the football away from the Packers' goal. Thirty-eight seconds remaining in the third quarter. Thirteen to seven, the Packers out in front. The penalty takes the ball all the way back to the Packers' 40-yard line. It remains third down and 32 yards to go for the New York Giants. Well, we've got a jam-packed Yankee Stadium here this afternoon. It's cold, but they've seen quite a football game. Tittle takes the ball now, goes back to throw, looks downfield, fires the pass down the middle. It's complete to Webster. Webster is at the 33-yard line, hit and dropped immediately by Bill Forrester. Pick up on the play of seven yards. Ball is now at the Packer 33-yard line. 21 seconds showing on the clock here in the third quarter. 13 to 7, the Packers out in front. Fourth down and 24 yards to go for the New York Giants. Clock is ticking away, and we've had another penalty call there. There was a flag on that last play. Three seconds showing on the clock. The scoreboard clock may not be correct. Another long march coming up against the New York Giants. Moves the ball all the way back to their 40-yard line. And again, we've had holding called against the Giants. Two plays in succession. The Giants have been called for holding. Obviously, the clock was officially stopped. The scoreboard clock did not stop, so we have a few seconds remaining here in the third quarter as the Giants come out of the huddle. It's third down and 47 yards to go now for the Giants. Tittle goes back to throw. Being chased, rolls over to the far sideline, gets the pass away. It is incomplete, intended for Gifford. Down on the Packer, 46-yard line. Gifford had it in his hands but dropped the ball. And it's now fourth down and 47 yards for the New York Giants. Well, they had moved the ball by penalty all the way down to the Packer 18-yard line and then penalty set the Giants back to their own 40. Lou Carpenter has come in as one of the deep men along with Elijah Pitts for the Green Bay Packers. Willie Wood ejected from the football game just a few moments ago. Don Chandler back to punt. Line of scrimmage, the Giants 40. Chandler gets the snap from center, gets the kick away. A short kick coming down on the Packer, 35-yard line, rolling to the 30, and rolling dead just across the Packer, 28-yard line. It'll be first and 10 at that point for Green Bay. A 32-yard kick by Don Chandler. We can't possibly have much time remaining here in the third quarter. The scoreboard clock has run out. 
but it was running during one of the discussions about penalty, and there's the gun sounding the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Green Bay Packers 13, the New York Giants 7. What's it like to smoke an alpine? Well, it's like a sky full of clouds racing along with the wind. That's what it's like to smoke an alpine. Alpine has a freshness about it like morning dew. A light, lively, downright exuberant kind of taste. There's something more than smoking with an alpine cigarette. If this sounds good to you, try alpine filter cigarettes. The fourth quarter of today's National Football League championship game is brought to you by Ford. See the big and lively super torque Fords, the middleweight Fairlanes, fun-filled Falcons, and luxurious Thunderbirds, the most popular cars in Ford's history. They're at your Ford dealers now. This is Ted Moore along with Ken Coleman from Yankee Stadium, and we've got 15 minutes of action remaining in this championship game. The Packers own a six-point lead as we head into the final quarter, and they also have the football. First and ten on their own 28-yard line. Well, that was kind of a wild and woolly third quarter there. The New York Giants managed to score on the Packers. That marked the first time in six quarters of football. But they got on the board now, and the Green Bay Packers own a none-too-healthy six-point lead. Star. Takes his team up the line of scrimmage. Fakes a handoff to Taylor. Gives to Tommy Moore in at left halfback. Moore on a sweep around the right side. Is across the 30 and bounced out of bounds over at the far side of the field. Just across the 40-yard line. So Tom Moore is seeing his first bit of action for the Packers this afternoon. Eric Barnes made the tackle. And now we've had Lou Carpenter move into the Packer lineup. Lou is quite a journeyman on this Packer football team. Can go in at either end position. In any one of the backfield positions with the exception of quarterback. He's now in as a flanker replacing Boyd Dollar. Star goes back to throw. Fires one. Incomplete. It was intended for Carpenter. Just barely into giant territory. Green Bay Packers are doing something in this championship game that they have not done all season long. And that is that they have been using... Max McGee and Boyd Dollar on the same side. Usually they will play opposite side. One flanking, the other on the line of scrimmage is the split end. On that last play, Boyd Dollar was also on the same side as Max McGee. Dollar replacing, or rather a Carpenter replacing Dollar in the lineup. There's a handoff going to Jimmy Taylor, and Taylor drives up the middle across the 45-yard line to the 47. He was tackled by Sam Huff, Dick Modulewski, Big Rosie Greer. Third down. Packers have five yards to go. Ball on the Packers 47 yard line. They're out of the huddle now. 13 minutes, 44 seconds. That's the time that remains in this game. Star goes back to throw. Getting rushed, gets the pass away. It's a long, high pass coming downfield. Almost grabbed off by Max McGee, and he and Dick Lynch were in quite a battle for that football. McGee almost had it, finally dropped it down on the 25-yard line of the Giants. Bart Starr has now thrown 20 times in this football game, has completed nine of them. Both Starr and Tittle this afternoon well under their completion percentages for the regular season. So it's fourth down, five yards to go, and again the Packers will be forced to punt. Max McGee going back to do the booting, and we've got Johnny Counts as the lone safety for the New York Giants. The snap to McGee gets the kick away, a high one coming down on the 27-yard line and rolling out of bounds on the Giants' 23 at this side of the field. First and ten at that point for the New York Giants. Now the officials bring the ball in. And they're going to place it at the 24-yard line. First and 10 for the Giants at that point. The punt by McGee was good for 30 yards. And again, the wind has blown the football away just as it was on the ground. The official gets it, brings it back, hands it to Ray Witeka, who gets over the ball. Tittle takes. Hands off to Phil King. Phil on a cross to the left side. Drives over the 25-yard line to the 27. 
And it was Ray Nitschke along with Henry Jordan making the stop for the Packers. Pick up on the play at three yards. Second down and seven for the Giants. They break out of the huddle, not taking too much time. They trail. And this is the fourth quarter. Tittle takes the two steps back, fires the sideline pass intended for Gifford. It was incomplete. Ray Nitschke was in on Tittle in a hurry. Twelve minutes, 53 seconds remaining in this football game. 13 to 7, the Green Bay Packers out in front of the New York Giants. We've got Phil King coming out of the ball game now for the Giants, and I believe that that would be Joe Morrison going in to replace him. Morrison in the lineup at left half back now. Tittle goes back to throw, fades back, gets the pass away right down the middle, incomplete, deflected by Hank Greminger, and then almost grabbed off by Herb Adderley. The pass was intended for Frank Gifford down in the Giants' 40-yard line. So it's fourth down and seven yards to go, and the Giants will be forced to punt. Lou Carpenter and Elijah Pitts going deep for the Packers. Standing on the Packers' 35-yard line. Chandler will have the wind at his back. Gets the kick away. A high spiral. Over the head of Carpenter. Picked up on the bounce by Elijah Pitts. Moves his way back up to the 30, the 35, to the 40, the 45. Cuts away from one tackler. Moves down into giant territory to the giant 42-yard line before he's tripped up. And it was Phil King who made the stop for the New York Giants. Elijah Pitts fielded that ball on the roll. Got some pretty good blocking down around the Packer 35-yard line. Moved down into Giant territory to the 42. Call it the 43-yard line before he was stopped. The Packers are on the prowl. Starr takes the ball, hands off to Tom Moore. Moore sweeps to the right side. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, tripped up. Falls forward to about the original line of scrimmage. Rosie Greer holds him down there. No gain on the play. Second down, 10 yards to go. Boyd Dollar is back in the lineup for the Green Bay Packers at the flanker back position. 11 minutes and 50 seconds remain in this championship football game. 13 to 7, the Green Bay Packers lead the New York Giants. Jim Ringo over the ball at center for the Packers. Second down, still 10 for the Pack. On the Giants, 43. Handoff goes to Jimmy Taylor. He drives right into the middle, hit by the blue jerseys. May have picked up a yard. Dick Modzilevsky was right there with some help from Sam Huff. Taylor drove him back about a yard. Third down. A little more than eight yards to go. Packers have the football in giant territory. Ball is on the giant 41 and a half yard line. Green Bay out of the huddle now. This time it's Dollar flanked to the left side with McGee split on the left side. Starr goes back to throw. Fires a pass complete to McGee. He's at the 30-yard line and forced out of bounds on the New York 28-yard line by Jimmy Patton. Nice pass thrown by Bart Starr. McGee took it without breaking stride. And the Packers have moved to a first down on the Giants' 28-and-a-half-yard line. Ten minutes and 49 seconds remain in this championship game. 13-7. to Green Bay leads the New York Giants. Packers in possession and threatening again. Ringo over the ball. Starr counting off. Hands off to Taylor. Taylor hits the line on the left side, and he is stopped almost in his track. Sam Huff, along with Dick Modulewski, and Tom Scott all in on that tackle. Taylor managed to pick up a yard. Second down, nine yards to go for the Packers. Andy Robustelli, Rosie Greer, Dick Modulewski, and Jim Catcavage across the front line for the New York Giants. Tom Scott, Sam Huff, and Bill Winter, the linebackers. Lynch, Barnes, Webb, and Patton in the defensive backfield. Packers flank McGee to the left side. Draw play to Taylor. Diagnosed. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped on the 29-yard line. And it was Jim Catcavage busting through there to break up that draw play. Loss on the play of a couple of yards. 
And this has been a battle of tremendous defenses this afternoon. Both of these teams doing well defensively. Third down, a little more than 10 yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. Nine minutes and 37 seconds showing on the clock. Starr counting off. Takes the ball, hands off to Tom Moore on the draw play, and Moore is dropped in his tracks. And again, it was Jim Katkavich moving in to make the tackle. Starr tried to cross up the giant defense there by calling the basically the same play. Giving the ball to two different men on draws. Fullback Jimmy Taylor and then Tom Moore, but the giant defense was up to it. And now with fourth down and 14 yards to go, we're going to have another field goal attempt by Jerry Kramer, this time from the 40-yard line. Bart Starr will hold. Kramer will be kicking into the wind. The ball is snapped. The boot. It is no good. Coming down on the three-yard line, bouncing to the five. Grabbed off down there by Jim Patton, who is playing the lone safety. And he is tackled as soon as he picks up the ball on the four-yard line. So the Giants have the football. They're on their own four-yard line. And this game may seesaw into quite a defensive battle now as the two teams wait for the breaks. 13-7, to the Packers out in front by six points. Eight minutes and 37 seconds. That's all that remains in this championship football game. Y. Tittle takes his team up the line of scrimmage. Hands off to Alex Webster, the fullback, and Webster is hit and dropped at the line. They'll give him his forward progress just about to the five-yard line. Dave Hanner made the stop for the Green Bay Packers. So we've got second down, 10 yards to go. Tittle goes back into his own end zone to throw a pass. It's a long one, incomplete. It was intended for Del Schopner. Down on the 45-yard line. Why Tittle really put a lot of arm into that ball. Both of these clubs have three timeouts left. And as the game wears away, that becomes increasingly important. Third down, 10 yards to go for the Giants, just across their own four-yard line. 13-7, to seven, the Packers lead. Seven minutes, 58 seconds remain in the football game. Green Bay Packers attempting to repeat as world champions. Giants trying to take the title away from them. And the Packers go offside. Charging across the line was Dave Hanner before the ball was snapped. The ball actually was never put in play. Packers charged with being offside. Ball has moved out to the 10-yard line. Third down, now only five yards to go for the New York Giants. Third and five. Now the Giants set. With Tech over the ball. Tittle takes. Goes back to throw. Back to his goal line. Fires the pass out to the right side. It's complete to Gifford. At the 25-yard line on the sideline, he's immediately batted out of bounds by Herb Adderley. The sideline pass, good for 15 yards. And the Giants have themselves a first down on their own 25-yard line. First and 10. Seven minutes and 52 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. 13-7, to seven, the Packers lead by six. Wasaka leads the team up to the line of scrimmage, gets over the ball. Gifford split on the right side. Morrison in the backfield in place of Phil King. There's a short pass thrown complete to tight end Joe Walton. And Walton took the ball at the 30, moved up to the 35, the 36-yard line before he was forced out of bounds by Hank Greminger over along this sideline. Ball is being placed on the 37 and a half yard line. And that will be good enough for a first down for the Giants. They're out of the huddle now with Tech over the ball. Again, it's Gifford flanked to the right side. Fake handoff goes to Webster. Rather, a fake handoff to Webster, and Tittle fires out the left side incomplete. It was intended for Walton. Right with him on the play was Jesse Whittington. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Giants. Line of scrimmage, the Giants, 37 and a half yard line. Seven minutes and eight seconds remaining. 13 to seven, the score in our championship game. Ted Moore along with Ken Coleman from Yankee Stadium in New York. The 
Giants go back in the huddle. We had a delay there a moment while one of the players tied his shoes. Some of the Green Bay Packers linemen are still wearing cleats. All the backs and ends wearing the ripple sole shoes. And that's what all the Giants are wearing. Second down, 10 yards to go. Tittle takes the ball from center. Goes back, fires the short pass, completes to Gifford. Knocked out of bounds by Herb Adderley. At the 44-yard line. And again, that devastating sideline pass was complete to Frank Gifford. There's very little you can do about that. The short pass. Tittle takes the ball from center, just straightens up, moves back a couple of steps, and fires out to the right side. That one was good for seven yards. Third down and three yards to go. Ball just short of the Giants' 45-yard line. Tittle takes, fakes a handoff to Webster, rolling out to the right. He tripped and fell and threw the ball underarm, just getting rid of it. There was a receiver there. He won't be called for intentional grounding. He rolled out to the right on an action pass. Was trying to hit somebody as he fired it underhanded just to keep from getting that three or four yard loss. But it's fourth down, three yards to go, and the Giants will be forced to punt. Chandler going back to do the booting. Carpenter and Pitts deep for the Packers, standing on the Packers' 25-yard line. Low pass from center. Chandler picks it up, gets the kick away, angling toward this sideline, and going out of bounds inside the Packer 30 at about the 28-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 at that point for the Green Bay Packers. 32-yard kick by Don Chandler. This game is really beginning to seesaw now in the fourth quarter. Six minutes and 53 seconds remaining. 13 to 7, the Packers lead. They own the football. First and 10 on their own 28. Ringo over the ball. Starr takes hands off to Jimmy Taylor. Taylor on a counter play to the right side. Moves up across the 30 yard line to about the 34 before he's dropped. And Sam Huff getting off the bottom of the pile. With some help from Bill Winter. Pick up on the play of six yards by Jimmy Taylor. Second down, four yards to go. Packers come out of the huddle. McGee flanked very wide on the left side. Starr hands off to Tommy Moore. Moore pops through a hole on the right side and moves across the 35-yard line up close to the 38. Moving in was Alan Webb along with Jim Patton, the two safety men, to make the stop. Very close to a first down, and we're going to have a measurement now of the chains coming out from this side of the field. Paul Horning is coming back into the Packer lineup. He'll replace Tom Moore at left halfback for Green Bay. Here come the sticks. They're being placed. It's short of a first down, just barely short of a first down. Less than a yard to go. Third down for the Green Bay Packers. Ball on the Packers' 38-yard line. Now Ringo gets over the ball. Bart Starr rubs his hands together before he crouches and starts to count. Here he goes. The handoff goes to Taylor, and Taylor over the right side. Moves across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Making the tackle for Sam Huff along with Alan Webb coming up from the safety position. Here comes Green Bay out of the huddle. Giant defense set. Dollar flank to the right side. Handoff goes to Taylor. He hits the middle. The Giants are waiting for him. Sam Huff along with Jim Catcavage making the stop. Rick Lynch coming up to add a little help. Taylor managed to power his way forward to the 45-yard line. Carrying a couple of tacklers with him. Makes it second down and eight. Two-yard pickup by Taylor. Packers out of the huddle. Four minutes, 58 seconds. Packers on a six-point lead. Gennett Dollar flanked to the right side. There's a handoff to Horning. Horning sweeping on the right side. Moves up to the 50-yard line and down into giant territory before he's stopped over at the far side by Sam Huff. Fred Thurston threw a good block. A couple of yards behind the line of scrimmage to Springhorning. 
And it's third down, about a yard to go, the way it looks from here. We're probably going to have a measurement. Here in New York, like in cities all over the United States, the new 63 Ford Fairlane is setting all kinds of new sales records. Just introduced last year, the Ford Fairlane's record for first year sales was topped only by two cars in automotive history. And those two cars were the Ford Model T and the Ford Falcon. There's good reason for this success. The Ford Fairlane is in a class by itself. Outside, its trim new size lets it handle neat and nimble. Inside, there's big car room that lets you stretch out in man-sized comfort. And you can get this hot new middleweight with V8 punch. In fact, you have your choice of a thrifty six or two powerful V8 engines. For 1963, there are three new station wagons and two new hardtops to choose from. With all the spirit and spaciousness you need, all the glamour and go that you could ask for, and the new Ford Fairlane is more carefree than ever with Ford's exclusive twice-a-year or 6,000-mile maintenance features. All this car, and it actually costs less than some compacts. Now you know why the Ford Fairlane is the car to see, the car to buy. See it at your Ford dealers. On that last play, where Paul Horning ran very close to the first down, he was injured as he, as he was tackled over at the far side of the field. And Tom Moore has come in to replace him. Another lineup change for the Packers. Bob Skaronsky has come in at left tackle, replacing Norm Masters. Four minutes and 30 seconds remain in this football game. The defending champions, the Green Bay Packers, are out in front of the New York Giants by a score of 13 to 7. Now the Packers break out of the huddle. Third down. Less than a yard to go. Star sets his team. Takes. The handoff goes to Taylor. Taylor slides off a tackler, sweeps to the right side, and moves across the 45 down to about the 41-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds by Erich Barnes and Jimmy Patton. And the Packers have themselves a first down on the Giants' 41-yard line. First and 10. Box shows 4 minutes and 25 seconds. With Taylor going out of bounds, that stops the clock. Packers again come out of the huddle. Swing go over the ball. McGee flanked on the left side. Handoff goes to Tommy Moore. Big hole in the middle. And Moore drives down to the giant 29-yard line before he stops. Jimmy Patton along with Dick Lynch making the tackle for the New York Giants. And the wind here at Yankee Stadium is kicking up swirls and dust off the frozen field. Another first down for the Green Bay Packers. They've moved to the giant 29-yard line. Again, Bart Starr takes his team back into the huddle. Giant defense sets up. Jim Ringo leads the Packers out of the huddle. Gets over the ball at center. Starr blows on his hand. Now he starts to count. McGee flanked on the left side. Handoff goes to Jimmy Taylor. Taylor slips behind the line of scrimmage, falls forward, and moves the ball ahead for about a half a yard. Now let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is WGY, 10 on your radio dial, Schenectady. Three minutes, 24 seconds remain in this football game. The Green Bay Packers lead the New York Giants 13-7. to The Packers in possession, second down. Nine and a half yards to go for the Packers. Starr fakes a handoff, goes back to throw, fires over toward the far sideline. Incomplete, Boyd Teller had it right in his midst and dropped it on the 18-yard line. Erich Barnes was playing Dollar rather loose, and Dollar had that pass but dropped it. And there's where cold weather can catch up with you. The receivers have the cold hands. There's a good possibility that at times they will drop those passes right at them. And we've had defensive holding called against the New York Giants. A penalty takes the ball down to the 24-yard line of the Giants, and that's an automatic first down. First and 10 for the Packers on the Giants' 24. Defensive holding call. Handoff goes to Moore. A bad handoff. He gets possession of the ball and is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Driving in all the way from the safety position was Jimmy Patton to make the tackle. Lost on the play of two yards. Moore bobbled the handoff from Bart Starr. Two-yard loss. Second down. 12 yards to go. Packers on the Giants' 26-yard line. Two minutes, 35 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Green Bay leading 13-7. to And very soon for the Packers, it'll become a matter of running out the clock. 
star. Hands off to Taylor on the draw play. Taylor looking for the opening. Slips on the icy turf and falls back on the 27-yard line. No gain on the play. And we've had a timeout called by the New York Giants. You know, I wonder how many of you armchair quarterbacks would have called this game the way Y.A. Tittle and Bart Starr have done. Well, we can't all call the signals, except when we choose the car we want. And believe me, the superb new 1963 Super Torque Ford is getting a big play from a lot of excited people these days. Just looking at a new Super Torque Ford is exciting, but you'll never know just how exciting this car can be until you slip behind the wheel and take it out for a spin. This beautifully styled Super Torque Ford has the newest ride on the road today, a $10 million ride. It's like magic, the sure-footed way the Super Torque Ford has with a turn, the whisper of power under the hood, the soft luxuriousness that surrounds you. Is there any wonder we say the new Super Torque Ford has the look, the power, and now the feel of the fabulous Thunderbird? You may have driven Fords before, but never one like this. Discover this get-up-and-go that's all glamour. The number to call is your Ford dealer. Two minutes and 15 seconds. 13 to 7, the Green Bay Packers lead the New York Giants. When play is resumed, the ball will be on the Giants' 27-yard line. The Packers in possession. Third down, 12 yards to go. This is a big call for Bart Starr. He's going to have to get that first down or give up the football or attempt a field goal. He's going back to throw on third down. Being chased, decides to run with that ball, moves across the line of scrimmage, is hit at the 23-yard line, and drops. And it was Jim Katkavage leading the way for the tacklers with some help from Jimmy Patton. Bart Starr couldn't spot anybody open, decided to run with the football. The chances are that the Green Bay Packers will now attempt another field goal with a minute and 54 seconds showing on the clock. 13-7 to the score in the football game. Ball is on the Giants, 22 and a half yard line. It's been a great defensive battle between these two clubs. Breaks have paved the way for the scores in the football game. Giants scoring on a block punt, recovering in the end zone for their touchdown, and we've had a timeout called by the Green Bay Packers. You know. In most every game, there always seems to be one player who's a standout. The man with a flair, special talent that makes him unique. It's this distinctive flair that sets Thunderbird apart from other cars and makes it the one car that's unique in all the world. Now the 63 Thunderbird offers you more excitement, more personal adventure than ever before. Its elegant beauty is already famous. Its luxurious interiors with the trend-setting swing-away steering wheel have been in the record books for a long while. But here's a fact you may not know. Thunderbird for 63 incorporates hundreds of changes, all designed for quieter, smoother operation and for more comfort. You'll find 26 major changes in the engine alone, all engineered to add to Thunderbird's classic performance. See the four magnificent Thunderbirds for 63 at your Ford dealers. Jerry Kramer will attempt the extra point, kicking to his left, the ball 20 yards in from the far side of the field. He'll be booting from the 30-yard line. The kick is long enough. Is it good? It is good, and the Green Bay Packers take a 16-7 lead over the New York Giants with a minute and 50 seconds remaining, and that is a nine-point lead, which means that even if the Giants can come back for a touchdown here, the Green Bay Packers would still lead in this football game. 16-7, as Jerry Kramer connects from the 30-yard line on his third field goal of the afternoon. Packers will now kick off. Deep. Johnny Counts and Sam Horner. Joe Morrison standing as the short man back about the 15-yard line. A minute and 50 seconds remain. The New York Giants are to pull this one out of the fire. They will have to score twice. And there's not too much time remaining. But weird things happen in football games. And Jerry Kramer will be kicking off now for the Packers. He gets the boot away. It's a high end-over-end kick. Coming down to Horner on the 15. He fumbles, picks it up on the dead run, moves across the 20 to the 25, is hit by the white jersey Packers there, and brought down. And it was Ken Iman, along with Ron Kostelnik, making the tackle for the Green Bay Packers. 
Officials are bringing the ball out from the far sideline. Placing it on the 27-yard line of the Packers. Back running a minute and 40 seconds showing. Packer defense digs in. Giants come out of the huddle. Y. Tittle flanks Gifford out to the right side. Takes the ball. Goes back to throw. Gets the big rush from the Packers. Fires incomplete and almost intercepted. By Ray Nitschke and Jess Whittington who are right there. The pass was intended for Del Schopner, the left end. Incomplete pass stops the clock with a minute and 27 seconds remaining. Green Bay Packers, 16, New York Giants, 7 in this championship game at Yankee Stadium. Giants out of the huddle, Gifford playing to the right side. Tittle goes back to throw, he'll be throwing long here, fires one right down the middle. Incomplete and almost intercepted by Ray Nitschke, and Ray is really mad at himself for dropping that one. Jerry Kramer just tied a record held by many players, Jack Manders, Bob Snyder, Lou Groza, Pat Summerall, and Paul Horning, when he booted his third field goal in a championship game. Horning, of course, tied the record last year at City Stadium in Green Bay against these same New York Giants. Well, that's been the difference this afternoon, the three field goals by Jerry Kramer. With tech over the ball, third down ten for the Giants on their own 27-yard line. Y. Tittle barking the signal, fades to throw, looks downfield, fires over to the left side. The pass is complete to Del Schopner at the 42-yard line. He moves it up to the 45 before he's brought down by Johnny Simon. So it's a first down. For the New York Giants, a minute and eight seconds showing on the clock, and the Giants have called timeout. One minute and eight seconds. That's all that remains in this football game. The Green Bay Packers, 16. The New York Giants, 7. And, of course, the last field goal by Jerry Kramer from the Giants' 30-yard line. Pretty well set up, the Green Bay Packers, because the Giants will now have to score twice in order to take this football game. The Packers with a nine-point lead. But the big thing is to score once for the Giants, and that's what they're trying to do. Y.A. Tittle comes over to confer with Coach Ali Sherman along the sideline. The fans are starting to file out of Yankee Stadium. It's been a cold, cold day here in the big city. But they've seen a fine football game. The winds and blowing paper dust all around the field here in the second half. The players have performed exceptionally well for the cold weather. Tittle is set now. Goes back to throw. Fires a short one. Completes to Webster on a nice catch on the screen pass. And Webster moves up close to the 50-yard line before he's brought down by Herb Adderley. Ball is brought into the hash marks and placed just exactly on the 50-yard stripe. So it becomes second down. For the Giants, five yards to go. They break out of the huddle very quickly. Tittle goes back to throw again. Being rushed, gets the pass away downfield. Batted away from Del Schopner by Hank Greminger. And there's 40 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock as the incompleted pass stops the time. 16-7, to 7, the Green Bay Packers lead by nine points over the New York Giants. Line of scrimmage is the 50-yard line. The ball right at midfield. Giants on the football, third down and five yards to go. The 30th annual National Football League Championship game. Offside called against the Green Bay Packers on that last play. The penalty moves the ball down to the 45-yard line, and that's good enough for a first down for the Giants. Clock is running now on the scoreboard. 36 seconds remain in the football game. Official time, of course, being kept down on the field. With Tecca over the ball. Tittle takes, goes back, looks downfield, fires one right down the middle. The pass is complete to tight end Joe Walton. And it's at the 32-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. The pass was complete. And the New York Giants call timeout to stop the clock. The scoreboard shows 33 seconds remaining. Now Frank Gifford comes over the sideline to confer with Coach Ali Sherman. 16 to 7, the Green Bay Packers well on their way toward their second consecutive National Football League championship. Now tight end Joe Walton is coming over to the sideline. 
Tittle talking to his teammates out on the field. Now he gets them into the huddle. Clock shows 27 seconds as the Giants break out. They have the ball first and 10 on the Packers 32. Tittle barks the signal, takes the ball, goes back to throw. He's being rushed, looks downfield, gets the pass away. It is incomplete down in the end zone, and it was almost intercepted by Jesse Whittenden. He looked like an outfielder circling under a fly ball as he tried to get under that one. But he couldn't come up with it. And the incompleted pass stops the clock with 20 seconds. 16 to 7, the score in the football game. Ken Coleman will be here with a wrap up on the football game right after the finish of the action. All the stands, all the fans are standing now for the last few seconds of this game. And again, Tittle goes back to throw. No rush being put on by the Packers. They're covering the receivers. Now Tittle is just running around back on the 40 yard line. Finally gets the pass away incomplete. Down in the end zone, the pass was complete, in, intended for tight end Joe Walton. The Green Bay Packers did not put the big rush on Y.A. Tittle. They went back with the receivers instead. Tittle had all day to throw that pass. He finally fired it, intended for Joe Walton, down in the goal line. It fell incomplete. Eight seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Packers, of course not rushing particularly hard because they want Tittle to take a lot of time on these pass plays. Now the Giants come out of the huddle. This could be the last play of the football game. Packers own a nine-point lead, 16-7. to Tittle goes back, looks downfield, fires out to the right side. The pass is complete to Walton. He's down inside the 10-yard line and pushed out of bounds. And there's the gun sounding the end of this football game. Joe Walton made a heroic attempt after he got that pass to go in for the touchdown. He was forced out of bounds at about the four-yard line. And shortly thereafter, the gun sounded, ending the football game. The final score, the Green Bay Packers 16, the New York Giants 7. We'll be back in a moment with a final wrap-up of today's game. Quarterbacks have always had an image of being lean, deft, and mighty quick. The 63 Falcon is very much like that. It's the deft little star of the Ford line that runs rings around other compacts. Just like a quarterback, Falcon is quick, lively on the go side. Not a four-cylinder, the Falcon gives you two spirited sixes to choose from. And it's lean, compact in every meaning of the word, yet with room where room counts. Inside, where Falcon seats a family of six. This year, Falcon's got extra staying power, too, to keep you off the sidelines. Its money-saving twice-a-year or 6,000-mile maintenance features are in all models except the specially designed station bus and club wagons. And that brand-new Falcon convertible is the fun-lovingest flip-top car on the road. So get to your Ford dealers today. Check the car that's got fun built right into it. Fun is what's new in the 63 Falcon. Just drive one and see what we mean. Well, the final score, 16-7. to The Green Bay Packers once again the champions of the National Football League. And here with a wrap-up on today's game, Ken Coleman. Thank you very much, Ted Moore. And uh, taking a look at the scoring as it took place here this afternoon, the Packers jumped into the lead in the first quarter when Jerry Kramer kicked a 26-yard field goal. He is first of three for the day to tie an NFL record in championship competition. In the second quarter, after a fumble by the Giants, gave the ball to the Packers on the 28-yard line, Starr hit Dollar with a pass down to the eighth, and then Jim Taylor slammed in behind right guard and right tackle and drove in for the touchdown. And Kramer came through with the extra point to make the score 10 to nothing. And that's the way it stood at the end of the first half here at Yankee Stadium in New York. The wind was a factor in this football game, and it became even more of a factor in the second half of play. In the third quarter, D. Rich Barnes came through to block Max McGee's punt. And Collier, Jim Collier, a rookie from Arkansas, landed on the ball in the end zone. And it was 10 to 7 New York as uh, Chandler converted. But then Jerry Kramer came back with uh, two field goals, one of 29 yards and another one of about 30. And that put it out 16 to 7 in favor of Green Bay. As far as the wind was concerned today, 
It was a win that, which you might say did not favor either team, but it probably hampered both teams offensively. And paradoxically, Jerry Kramer, in spite of the win problem, was able to kick the three field goals that uh, made a tremendous difference in the action here today. It was a strong defensive battle between these two clubs. Actually, the Giants' offensive unit was unable to score as the defensive team did it on the block kick with Collier landing on it in the end zone. They were playing on a field that was frozen with uh, gusts of wind about 20 to 30 miles an hour and occasionally stronger, and uh, it was uh, certainly something that hampered both of these offensive units. And, uh, Ted Moore, I certainly uh, think that the fans in Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, and in Milwaukee and in that section of the country right now must uh, really be whooping it up and happy about the fact that they have been able to come through with uh, their second consecutive National Football League championship. Well, I certainly imagine they will be, Ken, and uh, there's always quite a celebration in Green Bay whenever the Packers win, and a real celebration when they win the National Football League championship. We've just been handed the uh, official announcement that the winning players will receive better than $5,888. The losers will receive $4,166, Ken. Right, and taking a look at some of the statistics in the game, unofficially, uh, Bart Starr threw 22 times and completed 10. He hit Dollar uh, four times, Taylor three times, Kramer caught two, McGee caught one, and Jim Taylor, in running the football 28 times this afternoon, was able to grind out 95 yards against the great giant line. Y.A. Tittle threw the ball 40 times and completed 18 of them. Schaffner caught four, Walton caught five, Gifford caught four, Webster caught two, and King caught two. But the 10 to nothing lead at halftime was able to stand up as the Giants came through with their lone score in the third quarter on the block kick, and Jerry Kramer came up with two more field goals in the late stages of the game. And so for the second straight year, the Green Bay Packers, who had a record of 13-1 and over the regular season, losing only to the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day, have won the National Football League Championship before a tremendous crowd here at Yankee Stadium in New York. The first half of today's pro championship football game was presented by the Savings and Loan Foundation. It was brought to you with the best wishes for a brighter financial future from your nearby insured savings and loan association. Saving regularly today means living better tomorrow. Start the savings habit. Open an account at your nearby insured savings and loan association. Marlboro filtered cigarette with the unfiltered taste brought you the third period of today's championship game. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter, flavor, pack or box. Have a Marlboro. And the fourth quarter of today's NFL championship game has been brought to you by Ford, makers of the new Super Torque Fords, Middleweight Fairlanes, Fun-Filled Falcons, and Classic Thunderbirds. The new Fords for 63, the most popular cars in Ford's history. That winds up the NFL championship game. We certainly want to thank our producer today, Len Dillon, our engineer, Joe Sterniolo. Our spotter this afternoon has been Van Patten, and now, once again, the final score. The Green Bay Packers, 16, and the New York Giants, 7. This is Ken Coleman with Ted Moore, saying so long from Yankee Stadium in New York. This has been an NBC Radio Sports Presentation. Mm-hmm.